Veel beter zo, man. Ja. Dus gewoon inloggen. Waarom dachten we daar nog? Helemaal StreamYard gebruiken. StreamYard is de laatste tijd echt best Shalom, shalom. A second. Bluetooth off. That off. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Okay, sound is good, man. Sound is good. Shalom, this is GMS Holland coming back to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashemay Oshai. Before we start off, we want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect out there that are spreading this word as a city and the truth all over the falcons of the earth. Okay, so once again, we out here teaching the word for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, waking up our people to the fact um, that they are the biblical Hebrew Israelites. You know, as mentioned in the scriptures, you know, that the whole world knows about. The whole world knows about the Hebrew Israelites, man. You know, the whole world knows about, you know, the people that Moses led out of the wilderness. Okay, the, uh, the people that Moses led out of uh, Egypt, I mean. Okay, but does the whole world know about Esau? <laughs> if you mention the Israelites, Moses, Jacob, Abraham, they know. But do they know about Esau though? Because the thing that is mentioned concerning Esau, you know, that's a different, that's a different topic, man. Okay? Christianity likes to preach about, you know, God is love, God loves everyone, that God loves the whole world. But when we read about Esau, man, that's a different story, man. And it's funny that they, they never find a chance to mention the um, judgment that is going to come upon Esau, man. So bring out uh, Romans 9 and 13. Got it. This is Romans 9 verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay, so what about God is love? What about God is love? Okay, God is love, man. But towards his people, towards the chosen, okay? Towards the elect of the nation that he has put close towards himself, close to himself, not to every every individual upon the planet earth man okay when we when we check out the the, the account of the lord jehovah shai and uh the man that was crucified together with him okay he was a sinner but why was he forgiven because he he took he looked for repentance and because he was an israelite okay give me real quick x5 x5 and 29 Give me second chronicle no first chronicle 17 and 21 you see so with this account what do christians do they be like you see so it doesn't matter if you are a sinner if you are a murderer you can be forgiven okay but that's not the case man it's the case concerning the negroes latinos and indianos it's, it's the case concerning the people whose descent goes back to abraham isaac and jacob okay now, someone posted this picture in, in the group chat of two so-called white people um, giving birth to a so-called black woman. Remember that? Did you yeah. see that? And it was said that they are Dutch, two Dutch people who in their, in their uh, family line have, black, have, uh, have a black person. So they said the genes was laying dormant and, you know, it came out uh, in a later stage, which that's possible that's very well possible okay and a lot of people here in holland are also descendants of jake man because jake used to rule uh holland jake used to rule uh germany england britain scotland scotland means black land you see so those things is possible man um so give me the chronicles give me the chronicles this is first chronicles 
chapter 17 and verse 21. And what nation in the earth is like thy people, Israel, whom the Most High went to redeem to be his own people, to make, to make thee a great name, greatness, and terribleness, by, dri by driving out nations from before that people whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. You see that? So the Heavenly Father has so much love and compassion for the nation of Israel that he moved all kinds of nations, other, other nationalities out of the way to make place for his people, man. It's like when you have a shoe closet, right? You have a shoe closet, but the shoe closet is full. When you get a, a, a fresh pair of shoes, new shoes that you like a lot, you be looking at the old ones like, hey, oh, where? Well, Move it out of the way. Dude. Get it out of the way, man. You be like, I did this actually this week, man. <laughs> I was looking, I was like, man, I don't want to put my shoes on the ground here. I was like, I want them in the shoe closet. So I checked out the shoe closet. I was like, why the fuck are these ones even here? And I tossed them out. Because I was like, you know, they ragged up and ragged out. So I make place for, 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 the, for the new ones that look good. Okay? Now, just like how you can have a favorite, the Heavenly Father has a favorite too. And he chose the nation of Israel above all the... Uh, uh, nations upon the planet earth he made place for them you see so when a murderer of the nation of Israel looks for repentance in the name of Yahweh Shai, okay that's why we say Yahweh Bar Sham Yahweh Shai Sham meaning name okay Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai okay he needs to be forgiven man and that's only for his people so Christianity grabs it and says like you see there is mercy and God is love he loves everyone even the murderer that was on the on the cross you see he forgave him or the thief he's forgiven but why don't teach the whole truth why don't you speak about that the heavenly father hates Esau hated Esau now who is Esau give me that in uh, Genesis Genesis chapter 36 verse 2 I believe this is uh, Exodus 23, verse 29. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land, and I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and thou shalt drive them out before thee yeah so it says from the Red Sea so that is a that is the border the Red Sea onto the Sea of the Philistines the Sea of the Philistines which is the Med Mediterranean Sea that's why you also um, the Philistines are also called um, those of the Isles and of the sea coast the people of the sea coast because uh, the land of the philistines is basically the sea coast of israel but we took it down we took them over man that's why you had places like um, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, no 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 you had places like uh, gat and uh, also uh Akan, i believe one is uh, one of the names is gat uh, gat 100 percent that those were places where where uh, the Philistines used to dwell, man. Okay. Or God. Or Gad. Yeah, with T H. Okay. We took that down. We took that over. Um, and then it also says, from the desert to the river, Euphrates River, man. Past the Jordan River, that that land still belongs to us. Okay. And uh, and uh, and while we was inhabiting that land, mainly. Uh, uh, Reuben and Gad and a half tribe of Manasseh, we got into a uh, into a clinch with uh, with uh, Moab and Ammon, man, because they was pushing the border, they was they was moving up to the border as if it was their land. Yeah. Mean meanwhile, there is a landmark right there that states that it's not theirs. You see, so when they are moving up to the border, when they moving up to the border, there will be a problem. Man. That's looking for trouble. You see? Um, go on. Uh, can I say something about it also? Because it says, um, oh, yeah, yeah. little by little, the Most High is going to um, 
remove the people out of the land. So it's the Most High that's doing this. And he's doing it at this time also. Little by little, he's uh, showing the prophecies, you know. It's not all coming in one day and one year. No, the Most High works with it piece by piece, little by little. Otherwise, uh, the, the people would not have the time to repent. There would not be space for, for mercy and for grace, you know. So that's how the Most High works, little by little. And it's yeah. in, in, through his might. That's that true. Said. That's true. But in this, in this, so everything is well thought of by the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father, you know, everything is already predestined. So he already knows how everything is going to go. You know, the end is already manifest because the Most High, you know, he's, he's the ultimate author. He, 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 you know, he makes it go in the way that he wants. But here it says little by little because otherwise the land would be full of animals. The land would be full with creatures, and believe it or not, at that time, you had lions in the in the land of Israel, man. Lions and bears, you see? So, um, it had to go smoothly, otherwise the, the places where people used to live would be inhabited by animals, and then the animals would be a, a, a problem, man. You see? So it had to be done smoothly. But with that, the Heavenly Father gave, gave the commandment to the children of Israel, to slowly but surely slaughter the inhabitants of the land, man. Okay? And it had to be done. Guess what? Did we own up to it? No. And what happened? The gods that they believed in, the heathen nations believed in, became our gods. Because we, we yeah, it became stumbling blocks for us. Okay? And then we learned like, shit, we gonna get jacked up because we are not obeying the... We are, not, we are not obeying the word of the Most High. Okay? Um, that's yes. it? Yeah, two verses. Exodus 23, verse 32. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. Yeah, man. So letting them inhabit the land and letting them be among you, you know, it's going to be a snare unto you. That's why the Heavenly Father said in Deuteronomy 17, like, listen, man, if someone comes and preaches any other God, get rid of this dude, man, because he's going to allow it to spread like a cancer. Just like how it says nowadays concerning uh, a, a bitter root springing up among you. That's uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 and uh, 15, what do you have? The Genesis, give me Genesis. <clears throat> Give me a Hebrews 12 and 15. This is Genesis chapter 36 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Esau is Edom. You see that? Because when we preach and we speak about, you know, the heavenly father hates Esau. Yeah, that's Esau though. But not his descendants. No, Esau is Edom. You see? So when you read about Esau, it, it's... Um, it's, uh, how you call that? It's, it's um, synonymous. synonymous for e uh, Edom. You see? If we read about Mount Seir or Basra, it's, hey. a, it's synonymous to, uh, to Esau, man. Just like how Jerusalem is synonymous to Israel. The children of Israel. Okay? Yeah, give me this here. This is Genesis chapter 36 and verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir, Esau is Edom. You see that? Esau is Edom, man, and he dwells in Mount Seir. You see, so just like how we are being uh, called out to the place that we inhabit, Esau is also being called out to the place that he inhabits. I have Malachi. You see? So, the Heavenly Father has mentioned the hatred that he has for Esau, okay, which stands synonymous for Edom, which stands synonymous to the so-called white people, okay, which are actually red people, Thus the name Edom, which Edom means red, and Esau means wasted away. Now when we break that down, the word Edom is Adawam, uh, Adawamyam, okay, Adawamyam, which means uh, red. Okay, then when we go to the word Esau, it says Aishashwa. The word Aishash means wasted, and the Wa in the end means he. Okay, so wasted away is he. Okay. So that's Esau, man. What is wasted away? His pigmentation. Okay, when he was born, 
he came out of the womb and they was like, huh? <coughs> Behold, he is red, all over like a hairy garment. Okay, what does the hairy garment represent? Back in the days you had dyed garments, man. Okay, some garments were dyed red. He, that didn't mean he was hairy. He was, he, he was, um, he was, uh, he was red all over. You see? So that was his, um, his skin color. And basically, when, when, when Jake looked at it, literally, They mentioned that and they called it out and his name is based upon it that's why his name is called Esau okay so give me the dyed garment this is Exodus 26 verse 14 and thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering above a badger's skin see ram's skin dyed red see that now, give me your scripture this is Genesis Chapter 25, and starting at verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. You see that? So that's Esau. Like we said, man, Esau stands synonymous for Edom. And you know, the thing that these Christians ain't breaking down is who the nations are today. Who the biblical nations are today, man. Who's Esau? Who's, who's Jacob? Who's Israel? Who's Ham? Who's Cush? Who's Put? Okay? Now concerning these Hamitic nations, they have a lot of things to say. They say, that's Africa. Okay? And then they grab the Bi Sound of Bible Dictionary and they say, Ham, the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. So they know, they know very well, man. But are they teaching it? Are they bringing it out? No, because they are just bringing out, God loves everyone. God loves the world. Standing and singing and tap dancing, you know, for the so-called white man each and every day, man. Making sure he is, he is all right, man. I've seen a lot of, uh, I see a lot of these coonerines at the job also, man. When Esau comes, <laughs> everything has to be done. Oh, oh, I have to do this, this. Stop that shit, man. Stop that shit. Know your worth, man. This ain't the time. We, ain't, we are not in the time of segregation. And we are not in the time of slavery. Keep your fucking calm, man. Show him that, yeah, you're just uh, uh, waiting for certain things to be done. And then you can continue your job. Don't be, you know, all bent out of shape when he pulls up to the job. When you tell him, like, listen, man, I have to wait for this, that, and the third until I can, can continue. Then that's what it is, man. And yeah, he, he only sees money. He only sees euro science or dollar science, man. So when you're standing still, he thinking about the money. He ain't thinking about you. He thinking about the money. But you got to stand firmly in your shoes, man. And don't be, you know, like he's, like he's your modern day uh, slave master, man. Fuck out of here with that shit, man. You have to understand that he, he needs you more than you need him. You might think like, oh yeah, but my job, I'm gonna lose my job. There are so many jobs out there, man. You know? And if you come up with confidence to the, to the place where you, where you uh, uh, apply for, then they gonna see, uh, value that also, man. And as a matter of fact, this truth gives you more confidence and, and, uh, and makes you um, appear smarter and more intelligent also, man, in their sight. They be like, whoa, he really thinks deep, okay? He really thinks deep and before he answers, he really, you know, examines what he's going to say. How do we get that skill? Because of the truth. You see? So now, what I was saying, these Christians ain't breaking down who these nations are, man. We are. We are telling you who these nations are. Now, like I said, man, uh, uh, people here in Holland, they, they, they look like Edomites, but they are not Edomites. People in Ireland, they look like Edomites, but they are not 
called Edomite. So when I'm saying Esau is Edom and Edom is the Soka white people, okay, it doesn't mean that when you are a Soka white man that you that you then are an Edomite. Because if your line goes back to a Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are not an Edomite, man. That's common sense. Not only an only a, 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 a novice in this truth or a man that has not been granted with the wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the Most High is going to say that that's false. Because he is only looking at the outward appearance, man. Give me that in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. 16? I don't know if it's 16, actually. The Most High uh, look at the heart. And that's not 16 because that's too far. I think it's uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. I thought it was 16 also. I think it's 16 verse 7. 16 12. and 7, yeah. yeah you yeah. see? That's why I've said verse 16, but when you think about the story, it's yes. it's it's King uh, it's uh, Samuel looking for King David. So then when you think you like is that in chapter 16? That's far, man. You think and then you start to doubt. You'd be you'd be like maybe it's chapter 6. But yeah. Give me that. 16 verse 7. This is uh, 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. But Jehovah said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but Jehovah looketh on the heart. You see that? So man looketh at the outward appearance, but, but the heavenly father Jehovah looks at the heart. He knows your spirit. He knows your, your lineage. He knows what you descend from. You see? The Heavenly Father knows these things, man. Now, a man is only going to look at the outward appearance. Now, of course, this is, this is concerning the height and the stature of King David. Because here Samuel is looking for the next, next king, man. So the Heavenly Father is like, yeah, don't look at him because he's but a youth. Because King David was still a youth. That's why also um, um, uh, Goliath called him uh, uh, Ruddy. Because Ruddy goes into being a young of a young and healthy complexion okay and he was actually um, he was actually um, a belated so he was insulted man when king david came to came up to fight him what is this he's but a youth man you bring him bring him up to fight me a champion of the philistines you see it so that's what it's it's about but then again also concerning people, man. The most that looks deeper and further than how you look, man, with your carnal eyes. Now we, being in the truth, should we look carnally at men that come into this truth? You know, accept this truth, understand this truth, break down this truth after a certain uh, amount of time. Okay, and through the spirit, when certain men come up to the camp, we can already see like, I, that's not an Edomite, man. Or that's not a Kushite. Or that's not a Moabite. We've seen these things, man. We've seen these things, man. There was a man that came from uh, from where was he again? He comes to the camp sometimes. He, but he still has dreads. I think he's from um, East African country, like Tanzania or something. And he's cool, man. You know, he has features of a uh, of a of a Canaanite. The one with the cuts in his face. That one? No, I don't know if he has cuts. Maybe he has cuts, yeah. But he might have Kushite features, you know, Canaanite features or whatever. But guess what? The, the spirit speaks speaks more, man, than the outward appearance. So pay attention to what I'm saying, like, because people can twist and turn your words and be like, you see? So, you know, he's saying Edom is the so-called white man. And then, of course, they're going to point at him and be like, so what is he doing there then? Simple as hell, man. Jake <coughs> should stop being fucking simple, man. Okay? Because the spirit goes deeper than the eye sees, man. The spirit, through the spirit, things are being revealed that you have never thought of, man. So, the, car the carnal mind set has to stop. The Heavenly Father requires you to become more spiritual and to apply things the way the Heavenly Father applies these things. So like the Heavenly Father says, I look deeper, you should start to look deeper also, man. I remember there was a carnal ass Negro in the camp. He used to be in the camp. Dude pulled up. 
he had a black t-shirt on, red hair, red hair, literally red, red hair. He had a beard, weed leaf on his t-shirt. He came up and, and then the dude said, the carnal ass Negro said, look, um, Satan is coming. And me and Chazak, we was looking and we was like, nah, that ain't Satan, man. We saw a Jake, me and him, we saw a Jake. I was like, no, 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 I think he's a Jake. And then he started talking. The, 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 you know, when, when, when you see someone explain like this, like, you know, but, 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 but the hand like this, you already know why are you doing this. Okay, but then he said he's Irish. He's Irish, this, that, and the third. So he was like, you see, that's a Jake right there, man. Last year's summer, right? No, oh, man, this is like five years ago. Last year's summer. Yeah, it was, was also the carnal as new I'm talking about. Yeah. You see? <laughs> he wasn't here last summer. He's long gone, man. That's year. like five years ago, man. I think last year we also had an uh, Irish person coming to the camp. Okay. That's why I was like, huh? Yeah, man, so, you know, it goes deeper than that, man. Give me a scripture. This is um, Matthew. Matthew 13, verse 3. Let, uh, let me start at 29. But he said, They, lest while ye gather of the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. No, yeah, I understand your point, but then you, st okay. you have to start in the beginning, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You cannot start in the middle of the. I got the other one. This is uh, Romans 8, verse 16. Give me the one that the Most High knows all the hairs on your head. That's, that's actually the precept. Is that Matthew 6? I think it is. Or is the, the, the similar one in the other groups? I have Daniel 12 for you, verse 10. Daniel 12, verse 10? Yeah. Matthew 10, verse 30. This is Matthew 10, verse 30. But the very hairs of your head. Start at 29. <clears throat> this is Matthew 10, verse 29. Are not are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father but the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess also before my father which is in heaven you see that so we are of more value and the heavenly father knows you man so when you repent the heavenly father is right there looking at you man the book of luke says that the angels re rejoice in heaven when a man turns to yahweh shem Shai. so they know you man they know they know who you are man the heavenly father says every individual hair upon your head is numbered you don't know how many hairs you've got on your on your head man you don't know shit about that but the Heavenly Father even knows that. Something that is basically, when you look at it, uh, innumerable. The word in comes from the Latin word not. Whenever you say innumerable or impossible, the word in and im stands for not. Okay? So when you see that in the beginning of a word, they already know what it's talking about. Okay? So innumerable, when you basically, when you look at someone's hair, you be like, that's impossible for me to count. But for the most high, it's not impossible. The most high just looks at it and he's like, okay. He scans it and he knows it. So he also knows where your, where your line comes from. If the heavenly father says in the book of Ezra, grab the Urim and the Tumim, and yeah. then you're going to find out where, <laughs> whether he's a Levite or not. If the Heavenly Father has given us these two stones by which we can connect with the Spirit and understand the man's lineage, then how much more does he know it himself? You see? So the Heavenly Father looks deeper than that, man. But he does hate Esau. So when the Heavenly Father looks at your spirit and he sees you are the direct descendant of Esau, Edom, Amalek, uh, Timon, I do, Mia. The Heavenly Father know, man. Hey, you're, and, and we kind of know also, man. We know when we're dealing with, with freaking Edomites, man. We know that, man. We, we, you you acting funny, man. See, you can see the hatred in their eyes, but you know what the funny characteristics is for of these Edomites? They act as if they don't hate you. 
like humble, right? That's why I like Ishmael more, man. Ishmael show you, they hate you. Okay. Elam also, wow! Elam, man, I was jogging. Uh, two days ago, I was jogging. Two days ago, yesterday, I was jogging. Yesterday morning, I'm jogging. I see this, uh, this uh, uh, Caribbean Jake, so I greet him. I jog, I say, yeah, man, bless up. Boom, I run, I continue running, and then um, this elderly man came walking towards me. I thought he was a Rubian from the distance. Yeah. So then I greeted him, and he didn't greet me back. And then I looked good. I saw this hatred yeah, yeah, from yeah. Elam. He was looking at me like, why, how dare you raise your hand to me and greet me? Ooh, I was like, okay, okay, I see you, I see you. I should have looked better, man, because I ain't greeting no goddamn Elamite, man. <laughs> Freaking, how we call them is, we call them coolies. You see? My, my woman, when I say coolie, my woman is like, no, you shouldn't call them that. I say, I call them that. I call them how the fuck I want to call them. Hey, you, you don't even know the words that be coming out of their mouths concerning us. Get the fuck out of here, man. I call them filthy ass coolies, man. Elam. Because they hate me and they show me that they hate me. So why should I not show my hatred to do, towards them also return the favor i return the favor man you see fuck them man but you know like i said man esau acts as if he doesn't hate you but he hates your guts man and he only wants to use you to make profit because yeah. that's in his genes it's that's profit. literally in his genes when he when he grabbed us he was seeing money he saw athletic abilities he saw strength he saw uh, 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 intelligence, endurance. endurance when he grabbed us. He was like, I'm going to make some money with that. Okay, he wanted to have the strong, even when we were on the auction blocks. On the tests, you know. We was on the auction blocks and the, 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 the investors, the, the uh, up and coming slave masses was checking us out for our strength and our ability, our, our um, dental health also. Because if they would check the dental health, because if, if your mouth looked like shit, he knew like this guy ain't gonna live too long. Because your health, your mouth has a lot of influences, have, has a lot of influence on your health, man. If your dental health is shit, physically you ain't gonna feel good neither, man. You're gonna get sick a lot. You see? So Esau was checking all these things, man, because he saw money. So whenever you deal with Esau, you would be like, oh, he's friendly, this, that, and the third, the hell with that shit, man. He's only looking for profit. He's only looking for money. Okay? When they came to the Native Americans, the same thing, man. Give me that in Psalms. Okay? He came, and he was acting all friendly and stuff like that, but he's re he was ready to claim the whole entire country, man. And then say, these are the founding fathers of America. Founding fathers? My man, who the fuck, who the fuck are you talking to, man? And who the fuck are you talking about? The founding fathers of America, the ones that raped, robbed, and murdered America, the ones that that gave the orders. But there, there are already founding fathers of America, okay? But they don't go by the name America. You know why? The word America mean, mean, means bitter. The word America means bitter. <laughs> Okay, and when the Native Americans, also known as Gad and, um, and Reuben and Issachar, they was living there in, 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 in harmony, man, in peace, in tune with nature. In tune with nature, man. But the whole reason, give me that in Jeremiah, um, Judah and Israel are pressed together. I think it's Jeremiah 15, but I'm going to grab it for you. But it was of the Heavenly Father to also bring this devil, Jeremiah 50 and 33. It was of the Heavenly Father to bring them there, man. To bring this ultimate devil towards the land of America to jack them up also, man. Because the Heavenly Father was like, okay, in the time of the Assyrian Empire, they went to another land, okay, Ahar Aratiza, which means another land, and they lived there peacefully you know sometimes at war with each other 
you know, the different tribes were at war with each other. Uh, actually, not the different tribes, but there were made tribes within the tribe. So, Gad, yeah, so Gad is the tribe, but then they became, they divided in multiple tribes, like the Cherokee, the Chinook, Choctaw, Choctaw you know, they, they, um, they became multiple tribes also. Just like when you go to the Caribbean islands, it's predominantly Benjamin there, but you also have Ephraim and you also have Asher, okay? Uh, you have the Caribs, the Caribs, which is a, a Native American um, tribe, but it's um, but it's uh, Ephraim, okay? And then you have the Arwaka, which are Asher, you see? But then you have other Native American tribes also, which are of the same tribe, but they, they act as if they are different. The Mayas, the Mayas which the Mayas are, uh, are um, Issachar. Issachar, and then you have the Aztecs. The Aztecs, they are from um, Borundas, you know? And there, there was the vision among that also. And the Heavenly Father, he wasn't done. He wasn't done yet, man, you know? Throughout the years, we, we, we went through slavery under the uh, uh, Medio Persian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the, the Babylonian Empire, and the most of us like this ain't finished yet, man. Because they have to go undergo this ultimate punishment that they completely forget themselves, and from there I'm gonna build them back up. With the ones that have this spirit on them that is most diligent, that is looking for me out of themselves they're looking for me they're looking for their power with them i'm gonna rebuild the nation and those men are already chosen before the foundation of the earth that's what he's doing he has brought us to to such a low place where we don't even know where to a place where we call ourselves black a color that we are not that's how low the heavenly father has brought us people are nations but we are just black yeah people are nations and then we are following gods that don't look like us. And, 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 and you know, in, in, in the mind of Jake, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how much he has destroyed us. To build us up, to build us back up, to bring the prophets in the highways and byways, to water the land. Okay? To water the land, man. So give me the Jeremiah, and I'm gonna break down what I'm saying with that to water the land. It's uh, Isaiah. Give me that. I got the no, 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 give me that. This is uh, Jeremiah, chapter 50, and verse 33. Thus said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, Isaiah 41. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast, they refused to let them go. You see that? So the children of Judah and the children of Israel were captive, were captive together, man. Now this didn't happen in the Middle East because the, the, the children of Israel, they was being taken captive under the Assyrian Empire. But Judah, Benjamin and Levi not. You see? So when they, went, uh, when they were taken captive under the Assyrian Empire, they then uh, 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 went and um, left to America. Then Judah got uh, got uh, taken captive under the Babylonian Empire. So in the Middle East, we were never captive together. Where were we captive together? In America. You see? So the Heavenly Father brought this ultimate devil, made made him capture Judah, ben Judah Benjamin, Levi, bring, brought them over to the land of America where he had the northern tribes under uh, uh, under uh, subjection, man. And then the then Judah Benjamin and Levi came, and they looked at and they looked at Gad, and Gad was like, "Hey, you know." They felt they felt the connection, yeah, famili uh, familiarity. They was like, "Huh?" So that's why they also started communicating with each other, and be like, uh, they called Jake Buffalo Soldier because of his hair, right? A buffalo soldier you know what's up why are you fighting against us okay then what what happened was the the um, uh, 
uh, jakes from South, uh, South America, no, the jakes from the southern parts of America, which is Florida, they teamed up with Ruben and they dwelt among Reuben in Florida, man, and they mixed together. And Reuben, Reuben and, uh, and Judah were standing strong together, man, fighting off a lot of so-called invasions of these, um, of these Edomites, man. You see? Not tolerating them to come and enter into their land, man. Because Esau already done pushed out Issachar, man, in those days. Because the land of, the land of America was sm uh, uh, smaller than that, man. Because Mexico was way bigger in the beginning. Let me show you. Okay. Um, uh, so that, read that again. The Jeremiah. Look. This used to be this used to be Mexico, man. Way bigger, man. That's why these places. That's why these places down in that area are called what? Los Los Angeles. New Mexico. New Mexico. What else? Um What is this other place, man? I always forget it. Sacramento. Also, San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. San Francisco, I believe San Francisco means Saint Francis. Let me check it out. Um, what what is this other place with the D, man? Los. You see, so uh, uh, so Esau done already pushed. Yes, San Francisco may. Uh, San Francisco means Saint Francis. You see, Los Angeles, the Angels. Okay, you have all these places which used to be part of um, uh, Mexico, man. But these devils, man, they, they had their hand on it, man. Allow or uh, making Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Issachar, Ephraim, Gad, Reuben, all to suffer together, man, under the hand of this devil, under the sword. Of the Heavenly Father. Give me that in uh, Psalm 17. You give me a scripture. Oh, give me the, the scripture. Um, Jeremiah again. Uh, yeah, read Jeremiah again. And then give me um, Psalms. Isaiah 41. Yeah, also that. No? Yeah, you can read it now. This is Psalms 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Yeah, man. Yeah. So Esau comes up and he does all these things only for one, one purpose. To make money, to get, get the land and to uh, rule it. Because he saw, he called it uh, the land of gold. And, and the Native Americans also had a word, a, a name for this. Um, no, the Heavenly Father also had a name for this. Um, what am I saying? The Native Americans also had a name for the so-called white people because they was losing their mind over this gold and silver, man. They slaughtered whole Native American villages because they knew that there was gold and silver in the area. You know? And these were uh, these were um, private groups, man. This was not under the government that, that they was trying to set up. This was private little groups, man, of, of fucking killers, man, of Esau. Slaughtering Native American villages, man, because they knew that there was gold in the area. Or they would pull up and be friendly with the Na Native Americans until they knew where the gold and silver was. Meanwhile, the Native Americans had no business with gold and silver, man. They was like, yeah, whatever just the metal you see for them um, value was in land horses cattle you know things that they, that they could live off man. you know and there was a lot of value for them in horses man strong and powerful horses you know 
suited for hunting. So give me the Jeremiah. Yeah, no read on in uh, Isaiah. It's Isaiah. I need to make some moderators, man. I need to set up some moderators. What a brother, brother from Germany. Yeah, but he ain't there. Okay, go on. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you want the Jeremiah again, or you want something else also? No, I want Psalms. him to read on. Uh, Psalm 55. It's Psalm 55. Verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. You want that? No, Psalm 55. The Psalms that you also already reading. Okay. Psalm 55, verse. 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Yeah. It was only verse 21. I thought it was two verses. Okay, so give me the, the Jeremiah again. This is Jeremiah. You know, if there's brothers, you know, that always come to this channel and always, uh, you know, listen and learn, you know, just speak up, then I can uh, mark you as a moderator, man. Like, for example, uh, Bayan and um, Damawatya. You know, I have to make, put y'all up as moderators, man. Because, you know, demons, demons are pulling up and they need to get out of this conversation of ours man. I'm correct you can uh, I just put myself as moderator my second channel I put myself as moderator but I would like to have some brothers also out there you know that are diligently listening and learning you know to put them as moderators man so the Jeremiah is finished um, the facts about Esau coming to the land Jacob Jake Judah Benjamin Levi and the northern tribes was oppressed together got jacked up because it was the will of the Most High, man. Okay? Then the land, which was uh, 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 another land, or also known as um, the land of Ophir, was being called America. And that name is rightfully so because it is a place of bitterness, man. It is a place of bitterness. Okay? Give me the second Esther, um, uh, uh, my, my word shall flourish. And you give me um, Isaiah 41. This is Isaiah 41, verse 17. When, 50. Verse 15. Isaiah 41, verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. That's right. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills a shaft. Yeah, man. So a reward for us is coming because the Heavenly Father is going to use us to jack up these people man that he first has used to jack us up with okay give me psalm 17 no i want psalm 17 first and i thought he had it on deck but he showed me that he didn't have it this is psalms chapter 17 and verse 13 arise O lord yahweh Disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. You see that? So the Heavenly Father has used Esau as his sword in those times when we got had to get jacked up. And the Heavenly Father is going to use us now as his sword, as a sharp threshing instrument, having teeth to jack them up. Go on. Verse 16. Isaiah 41, verse 16. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. And the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in Yahweh, and shalt, shalt, shalt glor, glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, 
I, Yahweh, will hear them. I, the power of Israel, will not forsake them. Yeah, so like I was saying, man, the Heavenly Father brought us down to a place where we we were we became like dry bones, man. As a matter of fact, grab that in Ezekiel. We became as dry bones, not knowing anything. Okay? In the scriptures, when you are decked with something that represents understanding, when you deck yourself with clothing, with 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 muscle, you know, actually with clothing, and when you are naked, you don't know nothing. But we was beyond naked. We was destroyed. So far that we were like bones. We didn't even have muscle, muscle tissue. We didn't even have flesh and sinews. We didn't even have clothing. We was like a dry, we was like dry bones and skeletons. People marked for death. That was the state where we were, okay? That's even worse than being naked, man. We was worse than naked, man. We didn't even have, have meat to cover our bones, man, spiritually speaking. You see? Give me real quick, um, Sirach. Sirach. Uh, 15 and 3? Yeah. 15 and 3? This is Sirach chapter 15 and verse 3. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. No, no, no. This, you, you gotta keep that one and bring it out later. I was, th I was uh, thinking about the, the glorious down. long garment. Glorious six, long rope. So what, six and uh, yeah, six and Sirach, no, uh, Sirach twenty-seven and eight. Bayan is there. Hey, shalom, Makia, Bashim Yasha, Bashim Kakadash, Brakata. I'm gonna make you a moderator right now. Damn, let's go. Oh, you a moderator now, Ak. To delete demons like this, like what you see coming up on the uh, on the comment board. Baba Kasha, delete this shit for me, man. Terrible, man. Idiots coming on the comment board, man. I am sick and tired of these people, man. <laughs> know that in the last days there shall come scoffers, man. Mad with spirits on them, man. With demons on them. <laughs> He's going to work immediately. Boop, it comes up here. Yeah, gone. You're gone, man. <laughs> That's right, huh? Okay, uh, give me that. Sirach 27 verse 8 If thou followest righteousness, thou shalt obtain her and put her on as a glorious long robe. Yeah, man, see? So righteousness is being put on as clothing, a glorious long robe. That's righteousness. Okay? We didn't have clothing. We didn't even have meat on our bones. That's how far destroyed we were. So the Heavenly Father was like, okay, after the destruction of the people, which destruction doesn't mean ultimate elimination of the people, we are we were destructured. So the structure that we had, our way of living, having our place, having our cities, having our king, having our governors, having our princes, laws. our own laws, abiding by our own laws, that all was destructured, man. Just that structure was completely wiped away to the point that we we were destroyed. Okay, we, we, we couldn't even communicate with each other no more, man. That had to be rebuilt also. Because if you, if you look at, for example, the, the language of the, the language of the Dutch Antilles, it's, it's Papiamento, which Papiamento is a mixture of languages. It's a mixture of Dutch, English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese, you see? five languages mixed in one for us to communicate with each other man okay because we came from different <laughs> plantations and some were under the spanish some were under the portuguese some were under the dutch some were under the english okay some were under the french you have french saint martin and you have the dutch side of saint martin the the country is literally divided into two parts okay things like this man so we created the language because we was we was down under man we didn't have nothing so the heavenly father at a certain point he said like okay now y'all completely destroyed to the point that y'all don't even you know y'all have to create a new language to communicate with each other now when i see the poor and needy they are desirous to to seek the heavenly father again i'm gonna help y'all out read on isaiah 41 verse 17 
when the poor and needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, Yahweh, will hear them. I, the power of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places uh -huh. and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. See that? So the Heavenly Father was like, I got you. Hey, Shalawan, Mark. Damawacha pulls up. Ah, you know, it's funny that I mentioned them. I mentioned them and they wasn't there yet. They weren't summoned. <laughs> they wasn't there yet. And now I can make him a moderator also, man. You're a moderator also, Akia. So when demons pull up, you know what to do. Okay. Um, so the Heavenly Father was like, okay, the dry places, I'm going to turn them into places of water again. Because the truth was going to come out. The truth, and the truth is compared to living water. Living water. Give me that in, in John. And you give me your scripture that you already read. Um, also, with the water to the knee, with, with this. Uh, no, because this basically uh, is the same and it's breaking it down already. This is Sirach, chapter 15, and verse 3. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him. Yeah, so the bread of understanding. So this truth is also being compared to bread. The Heavenly Father has given us bread to eat. But how does he give us bread through his servants, the prophets, that are fixing you up a plate, man? The service the prophets is fixing you up a pl uh, it's like it's fixing you up a plate every time they go live every time they make a video every time that they decide to, to spend their time to go into the scriptures with y'all you know brothers that have to grow in this truth that is giving you that's feeding you with bread man you see having the olive oil on the side put some put some salt and pepper in there you dip the bread in it i'm on keto but Thinking about it makes me be like, yeah, that's, that's nice. You know, that's nice, man. That's being prepared for you, man. You know, which is these scriptures. Go on. And give him the water of wisdom to drink. The water of wisdom to drink, man. Because the poor and needy, we are the poor and needy. We are looking for water. And we are asking for water because we are thirsty. Okay, because we didn't have that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. If you don't have that, you're super thirsty, man. Okay, niggas supposed to be stop. Uh, niggas supposed to stop being thirsty for these females and start getting thirsty for the scriptures, man. <laughs> you know, divert your attention to the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai instead of these used up. Uh, 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 um, um, Used, no, I'm, I'm, I want to say something very filthy, man. Used up, used up, used up tissues. Like tissues that are already being used. Are you going to blow your nose with a tissue that someone else already used? Rough. That's what you're doing, basically. My thing rough. Or, or are you going to use the tissue that another nigga already yeah. bust his nut in? Are you going to use that tissue also to wipe away your nut? Okay. Rough. That's nasty. My what? things, bro. Bit. Not, yeah, hey, but you know, I want you to, to just understand what you are fighting for. It's the man. Same thing. If you are breaking your back for for females like that, it's like you know, really wanted to use that that other man's tissue, man. <laughs> but the truth is an untouched woman. The truth is supposed to be your first love. This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is supposed to be the woman that you want to make love with, man and take care of and 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 be be one with give me the scripture that says uh, let me be always be ravished with her breasts yeah i was thinking about that that's because that's what this this truth is man you're supposed to be in love with this word man it's supposed to be in you your 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 ultimate desire and love supposed to be towards these scriptures man okay now i'm not saying you, you shouldn't deal with the woman, man. That, that's your, your own choice, man. But to be honest, being now almost 10 years in this truth, now I understand clearly what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said, this is not a command, but this is my advice. It's better for you to be alone. Now I understand it completely. You know, but when I came in this truth, being 19 years old, man, I wasn't that deep, man. I was like, yeah, but... You know, I read the other verses where it says, 
but if you burn, yeah, yeah. but if you burn, then you know. I was like, yeah, man, I like that. You see, but now I understand Apostle Paul even more, man. Like he warned us, he warned a lot of us, man. You know, <laughs> if you only listened, think about it, man. If you only listened, you would have been somewhere else right now, man. Concerning, you know, this drama, but. Then again, you can look back at your life and be like, yeah, I made mistakes. I shouldn't have dealt with this, that, and that female. Look what happened, you know? Get, she got pregnant and shit like that. Now you have a bunch of children, you know? <laughs> and you, you, you can, think, you can reflect, uh, reflect on it and be like, okay, so if I did things differently, listen, man, the most I allowed all these things to happen the way that it did, man. The way you feel about it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, you su you're supposed to turn the switch and be like the Heavenly Father purposed it like this. So accept it. Acceptance comes with bettering your life and your ways inside of the Most High, man. In the sight of the Most High. But also going through certain things gives you the understanding why Paul's the Paul said, you know, it's better to be alone and things like that, you know? Yeah, I'll say something also. Yeah. It's like uh, this, what was it? This status that I put on my uh, WhatsApp, it also says, if you're depressed... What are you doing? I see you uh, on every corner, uh, you people. Yeah, you're preaching the Bible. Oh, you're uh, busy filming. I'm yeah. sorry, excuse me. No, okay? no problem. If you have a question, you can ask. It's no, no problem. I just was wondering, because I saw uh, other people too, just like you. Yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we are all together. Okay, man. Have a nice one. Yeah, man. Go on. So like uh, the status that I put up, uh, what was it, yesterday, you have this um, man, the soldier, and he says, if you're uh, depressed, that means you're dwelling in the past, you're living in, uh, your mind is continually uh, busy with the past, and if you're anxious, then your mind is con continually on the future, like, hey, I need to get this and this fixed, you know, so you're, you have this energy in you, but you, you can't really be at peace, but then you have the one that is in the, living in the moment, he is at peace, you know, and that's how you have to be in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh You have to be at peace. You have to uh, be like, okay, this is the path and the way that the Most High wanted me to go to, so that I can learn these things, so that I could next time recognize a trap and a snare when I see it. You know, that's exactly. what you get. You get these, these, uh, the eye self and the tools and experience. Beautifully to, said. To also, um, you know, help other people. Yeah, it's man. not for yourself alone, you know. You can instruct other people also. They say, they say, um, uh, worry looks back, fear looks to the front, but fate looks oh. looks above. Yeah, fate looks up. So if you're worrying about the things that that then happen, and if that makes you fearful for the things that are going to happen, you're doing it all wrong, man. You gotta look up and have faith and trust in the way. Yah Bashem Yah man. Also, this other um, this uh, this uh, this Grecian. You know of the of the how you call them of the how you call these this group again? It's also mentioned in the scriptures. The philosophers of uh, the Greek the Greek Empire. Uh, they call them uh, SC. I know I know where it is in the scriptures. X chapter seven. But there was a man. Let me see if I have that. I have that quote. It's a beautiful quote. Um, Poets. They are called. Um, it's like a bear with me for a moment. Where is the school? Oh, here. They are called. Uh, yo, what they are called? They are called um, Stoics. Oh, Stoic. The Stoics. Okay, now you had a, a, a Stoic, uh, Seneca. Seneca said, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. You see, which is, which is a, it's a quote which is very on point, man. Okay? And that, that is the fear that you carry towards the future. Okay? Scared that you're going to mess up again. No, man. You know, walk with faith and abound in grace of Yahweh Bashem Shai and keep it moving, man. You fall, you get back up. And you don't worry about 
you know, messing up again, that, that, might, that might be the case, man. But guess what? You gotta keep moving, man. Okay? You might imagine all kinds of things in your head, but you, you're punishing yourself more than the reality. The reality is not, is, isn't even like that. You created a new reality in your head. You know? My woman lo loves to do that. My woman loves to... No, scenarios, yeah. So she, she, she creates a scenario, and then she's gonna ask me things about that scenario. And I'll, I only say like, okay, but wait, is this the reality? Or is this just something that you just created inside of your mind? What if? Yeah, I just created a scenario. I said, exactly. So I ain't got time to talk about things that aren't even present, that are not happening at this moment because it's a waste of time, a waste of time and a waste of energy. Now we're going to have a whole discussion about something that doesn't exist. I'm not going to do that. You see? I'm not going to do that shit. You're punishing yourself oftentimes when you create a reality that doesn't exist. That's worry. Have faith in the most high, man. And the scripture says, um, uh, trust in him with all your heart. Okay, you got a holy trust in him. You see, that's why I um, also did a video and I called it um, Trust the Process. The most I is dragging you through a certain process for you to become better. And that's what you got to rely on. Okay? Uh, you uh, read on in uh, Isaiah. I have the breasts. Yes, give me that. This is Proverbs chapter 5, verse 19. <clears throat> Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant row. Let her Can't you start a little bit above? I think it's going to show you it's talking about wisdom. This is Proverbs chapter 5 verse 15. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Yeah, man. So, so when we got totally destructured, we started to drink water from the wells of other nations. We started to drink water water of the of the other nations uh, uh, their ways man meaning we went to broken cisterns we went to a cistern is it's a it's a uh, it's like a water pot. yeah a water pot like a a standard a standard with a bowl on top of it you know fills up with water birds can drink water out of it we can drink water out of it you know um but if it's broken, it holds no water. So if you go there, yeah. there's no wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be found. That's where we went to, you know, looking for the cisterns of other nations. But the Heavenly Father says, drink out of your own cistern. Drink out of the cistern that is designed and built for you. And like I said earlier, this is where our people cannot understand that if you are bowing down, to a so-called white man, a person that does not even look at you like you, there's something wrong with you, man. There's really something wrong with you. A soft-spoken devil, <laughs> like that. The scripture says the Lord has had a voice of many waters, man. The most, the most I his son was a man, an austere man. He overthrew a whole table, man. He was the hell with this shit, man. He didn't say that, but you know, he, he flipped over the table. Because they were selling doves, man. The they were selling sacrifices. Doesn't say that. But we know that the tables from back in those days were not your plastic uh, Ikea, Ikea. Ikea tables, man. <laughs> you know, that you just put up, you stretch out the, the legs, and there you have a table to sit on. Nah, man. These were not those type of tables, man. Yahushai overthrew the whole thing. All the money fell on the ground. They were selling sacrifices. And I always explain this, man. That is a man running a business, okay? A man running a business, he thinks well of how he can do certain things. So when I know, when I know there is only one path to cross the river, and that path is this one bridge at the south of the river, I can set up shop there and say, and I put, I put a, a, a barrier, and I say, if you want to cross the river, you got to pay me. So I'm going to situate myself in a place where I know 
people are reliant on the path to the other side money. to make money. Yesterday I went to the restaurant, okay, and I was, um, I went to sit down, I went to sit down and I ordered water. I ordered water. So there were two glasses on the table, normal glasses and two wine glasses. We ordered water, so basically they should have filled up the, the water glasses and take away the wine glasses. But they left the wine glasses, and on the bottom of the wine glass, you had a, you had like a, a ticket, and it it said the, the the best wines that they had and the price also behind it. So I was like, listen, this is business. How they handling the situation is business. They they want to make it easy for you to order this wine that they present right in front of your face. With every with the with the with the with the prices and everything with it, yeah. you see. Because if you're drinking your water, you're not thinking about wine. You might think about wine, but then you'd be like, okay, I have to call the the over, and then I have to ask for the wine um, or menu. I have to ask for the wine menu, and then I have to choose a wine. No, while you are eating and you think about wine, you look at the wine card that is attached to the glass. The glass is already there, so they want to make it easy for you that you feel comfortable and they can sell you this shit. The same thing Jake did. Okay, you wanna you wanna sacrifice for sins? You can buy it right here. Yahweh Shai was not having that. And that showed the side of the Heavenly Father, his son, that Christianity is not describing, man. Yahweh Shai became very angry. Also the way that he was dealing with his wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, that's not how, how a Christianity describes uh, the Lord, man. You see, but Jake wants to follow that, that, that uh, slick devil, man, who, who, um, who's derived of Cesare Bourgier, who, who was in love with his sister, Lucrezia Bourgier, yes. and who was a murderer, a poisoner, who, yes. even, who even Esau speaks about up till this day, man. You know, one of the most notorious people that ever lived in history, okay? But our, our people think that there is no problem with that. Or people think that it's just normal to go to to the to the um, the ways of the heathen and learn from that, man. Okay, go on, Proverbs. Uh, yeah, give me that real quick. This is uh, Jeremiah 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils; they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. So the heavenly Father. How about Shem Shai? This truth is the fountain of living water. This truth. But what did we do? We forsook this truth. We forsook this fountain. And what did we do? And you them out cisterns. We, we, created, we created cisterns, man. We created like places, uh, uh, you know, places to drink out of, which represent ways to go into. Okay? Witchcraft. Uh, entity, worshiping spirits, entities, following the other nations, go on. And you them out cisterns, broken cisterns. Broken cisterns, because a cistern is supposed to catch the water, leave the water for you there, when you pass by the cistern, you can drink the water. You see? But if a cistern is broken, the water goes through it, it, it's, it doesn't um, uphold its purpose, which is to catch water and to leave the water in it. The purpose of the host is of the cistern is gone. You see, so it's it's on. Um, it's not useful. Go on. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. It, they don't hold no water. So whatever you are into <laughs> is useless. Okay. So go back. This is Proverbs chapter five, <clears throat> and verse sixteen. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife thy youth. Yeah, man, so it says, let these waters be thine only. Okay, what does that mean? Let the waters be thine only. That means that these heathen nations ain't got nothing to do with this truth, man. Esau got nothing to do with this truth. 
Uh, Moab has nothing to do with this truth. Ham has nothing to do with this truth. Kush has nothing to do with this truth, man. This truth is for the Negroes, Latinos, and Indianos. The chosen people of the Heavenly Father. Okay? If you don't have the spirit to acknowledge this truth, that means that the spirit will never come upon you needed because the Heavenly Father hasn't chosen you. You see? Now, do, do the teachings of Yahweh Hashem Yashah require patience with each, with each and every individual man? Yes. Because you never know, man. Like we, like we went into earlier, a man might look, look like a heathen, but he really is not. Pretty simple. You see? So, keep the waters to your own. Keep the waters to thy own, which is your people. Keep it to your own people. Go on. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 19. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let this truth be as the loving hind and the pleasant roe. Go on. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times. Let the breasts satisfy thee at all times. Meaning, let this truth be your, be your uh, a loving wife, man. Let this, uh, this truth be your pleasure. Like the round breasts, the desirous breasts to, to touch and to, to deal with. Let this truth be that, be that loving wife, man, that you desire so much. And yeah, that's another thing, man. So the brother mentioned Sophia. Sophia, they created a whole doctrine around that also. That the Holy Spirit is a woman, this, that, and the third. The only reason that they say that is because the word... The word wisdom in the Greek is Sophia, which Sophia, wisdom is a female now. You see, just like um, uh, a spoon is female also, but a fork is male. Okay. Yeah, man. So, you know, it's nothing different than that. But yeah, you know, the scripture also speaks about um, wisdom as, as being a woman. But that's not literally be, to be taken. Also, okay. So, um, Judah and Israel are also being mentioned to be sisters. <laughs> but are they females though? No, they are not. So, you know, it's not to be taken literally. The Heavenly Father has counted Israel as a calmly and delicate woman. Under account, under account. Under account? Yeah. But the wind is so good. Yeah, but your task is this all here. Okay. And be the ravish always with her love. Yeah, be ravished with her love, man. Okay, the love, the, the, the happiness. The comfort that these scriptures give you are more than a woman, woman man, of, of nowadays. But the scriptures is being compared to a woman because the, a woman is supposed to give you comfort, love, rest, you know, pleasure. That's what the woman is supposed to give you, man. That's why the scriptures is compared to a woman. But these females nowadays, don't, they don't give you that, man. The only thing that they give you is a headache, man. And a... A frontal core headache, you know, the back of your head hurts, migraine type of migraine type of headache. All the all the headaches that you can get, she will give you. You know? And that's when you put a lot of your energy in it. You know, if you keep your energy to yourself and this truth, you know, and don't worry too much about what she be doing, man. You know, you're gonna find more rest for yourself, man. But still. What Apostle Paul mentioned, I fully understand, man. You know, it'd be better if you be alone, man. It'd be better if you by yourself. Because, because a man that had a wife seeketh to please his wife. The man that had not a wife seeketh to please your Al Bashem Yahushai. Your focus will be more on this truth. And that's why I said, man, focus on this truth, your your main, your main squeeze, your main love, man. Your first love. Okay, because that's that's more profitable, man. It's more profitable because it leads towards eternal life. You know, and what does the relationship 
you know, with these modern day females leads the word, eternal death, man. Or, you know, um, inevitable death. 100%. You can already think beforehand, like, I wonder how long this is going to last. Your parents look at you when you, when you have a new... When you have a new girl, I wonder how long this is gonna last. So if they already have that impression, how much more should everyone upon this planet Earth have the impression like, oh, I wonder how long it's gonna last? There are only a few cases where people actually stay together. And why is that? All the wickedness that has done covered the Earth in these times, man. So the Heavenly Father has sent the servants, the prophets, Okay, to water the places again because they are dry. They are without wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Give me, uh, oh, that's that's more to it's gonna come now, right? About the water. Oh no no, the reverend she with the rest. So give me John, John seven and thirty. Six. You mean uh, you mean you meant Isaiah, right? That more is gonna come. Yeah. You mean Isaiah? That that's gonna be people, right? No, he, he's gonna continue with that if he just drop it. What did you mean there with the... No, you already read it. Also, the water is wisdom. Also, the doctrine. Every step on that. Yeah? This is 7 and 38. 7 and 37. This is uh, John 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushai stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see that? So the living water, yes, water that brings life. Okay? What is living water? Water that runs. Water that moves. Okay? The scriptures speak about that the spirit moves continually. Okay? It's alive. Okay? But these, the water that you drink from these heathen nations is stagnant. It's full of death. When you drink stagnant water, that holds all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of, of poison, whatever, man. Piss. People come by, they piss. Creatures come by, they piss. They comes into the water. That shit is death, man. But living water is water that is continuously being filtered, man. Okay? When I went jogging, when I was living in Norway, Scandinavia, sometimes I went jogging up the mountain, man. Now there was water coming down from the mountain. You can just grab that water and drink it, man. Because it's being filtered. All the stones that it passes through is being filtered continually, man. You can just drink that. You know? It even tastes better than the water, you know, that you that you be drinking uh, out of the out of these bottles, man. Shit. You know? The heavenly father is watering the dry places again after he done destroyed, destructured our people. Read on Isaiah 41. Yeah. Because um, like the brother's going into, um, the Most High is going to water that place. And also if you go into that word Zion, Zion which is monument and also means parched place. And we have been parched, we have been destroyed, we have been uh, destructured also, you know. And the Most High is going to water us just like how he's going to water the land. You see? Isaiah 41. Oh, he has a precept. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. See that? So the doctrine of Yahweh Shemir Shai is what's watering the what's watering the the land. Okay? The truth is just like water. Okay, now who's gonna fill the dry places with water? The servants, the prophets. Okay? The Heavenly Father does it, but by the way of the servants, the prophets. Read on. This Isaiah 41, verse 18. I will open up rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. You see, so the Heavenly Father says, I will make... Read it again. Like, yeah. I will open rivers in high places yeah. and and fountains in the midst of the valleys. Fountains in the midst of the valleys. Read on. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Yeah, man. So places where there is no understanding to be found, he will set up um, uh, men that preach this word, man. You still have the flourish? 
Read on. Verse 19. Isaiah 41 and 19. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the book box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Most High had done it. So by the, by the, by the planting of these trees, the shita tree, the cedar tree, the box tree, these trees represent the surface, the prophets. Precept. Okay? By these trees, they will understand. They will know that the Heavenly Father has done this thing. Because why? Those trees represent the prophets and the prophets going to teach the people what the Heavenly Father has done in the land. And what, what the Heavenly Father has done in the past. What, what, what the reason is that we live in this condition nowadays. That is the water that's flowing through the land and that comes by the, by the speaking of the servants, the prophets, you know, by being a mouthpiece unto the Heavenly Father, man. Letting the people know where they are right now and where they came from so that they can understand where they are going. You got to know where you come from in order to know where you are going, right? That's, that's, that that, um, that um, proverb is legit. If you don't know that you are Hebrew Israelite, if you don't know where you're coming from, you're never, you, you're never going to know where you're going to, man. The scripture is going to explain you where you're going to if you, if you stay faithful, if you repent and continue in His Word. The Scriptures also explain you where you're going to if you don't abide by this truth. You're going to be destroyed, man. You see? So the fear needs to be within you also continually, man. Yeah. This is Mark chapter 8, verse 24. And he looked up and said, That's already read. I see men as trees walking. I see man as trees walking, okay? This was the man that was being uh, healed by the Lord Jehovah Shai. Okay, when his, when his sight was still fuzzy, you know, he saw, he, he was like, his, it looked like, like trees. Okay, then in the book of Ju uh, uh, Judges, I got it. in the book of Judges, the sons, the sons of uh, Gideon. Gideon were being referred to as trees. Okay? Spiritually speaking, and also in the book of Ezekiel, that's the precept. 31. Read the Ezekiel first. This is Ezekiel 31, verse 6. All the fowls of heaven made their nest in his bows, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in the greatness in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The, the cedars in the garden of the Most High could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of Yahweh was like unto him in his beauty. You see that? So the trees is representing a people, man. And it's uh, talking about Adam, right? Yeah, Adam, Adam. Adam, Adam is branches. Yeah, the Adamites. Adam is branches reached far man because we all come from adam you see adam was 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 uh, was in his glory and and the other adamites weren't to be compared to him to the adam that was chosen you see so but it's talking about the tree because people are being uh, uh, uh sometimes mentioned as trees in the scriptures and it also says for his roof was by great waters what we are going into which is this truth yeah so that's why he that's why when you say um, people look at us and they see something is something about us, something some, something's different with us because you know we are planted. Yara uh, like it says in Psalms one. If yeah, planted, I was thinking about that. Also, grab that Psalms chapter one. If you're planted by that great water, you know, then uh, you're gonna be different than these other people, man. Yeah, because the heavenly Father, He was dealing with Adam. He was speaking one on one with Adam. You see, gave him the oral law. You know, by my commandment, you do this, that, and the third. They didn't have the law on paper or on stone, but they knew about laws because the Heavenly Father has given them. Yeah. But the Heavenly Father didn't give these other Adamites. They was doing all kinds of crazy shit, man. They was doing all kinds of things. That's why the Heavenly Father's wrath came upon the earth, you know. Um, 
in the time of Noah. You was like, man, this, this is too much. This is too much. Now you, you, you only have to understand like, okay, the Heavenly Father is wrath, it's being built up, seeing the things that are going on right now, right? But the, the, um, the wrath hasn't come yet. The wrath is building up. The wrath hasn't come upon the earth yet that he destroys it by fire. How much has the wrath built up in the time of the Adamites by the Heavenly Father? You can only imagine then what was going on in those days, man. The same filthy shit that is going on right now. That is building up the wrath of the Most High. The Most High was like, let me drown all these people, man. They need to be drowned. <laughs> Yo! Only imagine what they was doing for the Heavenly Father to get so angry. I have that for you. That filthy stuff was going on too. But guess what? The lineage of Adam was the chosen lineage. Okay, so the Heavenly Father dealt with Adam. The Heavenly Father dealt with Abel. Abel got put to death by his evil punk ass brother man which is uh, which was Cain and Cain is back today looking to kill his brother murder his brother which is Jacob okay Seth was set up okay then you had many others Peleg okay Abraham Isaac Jacob boom Jacob is established okay out of him come many nations because Israel has become a multitude of nations right now. Like I was mentioning earlier, one tribe is also divided in many tribes right now. Man. Okay, Native Americans consist of many tribes. Benjamites consist of many nations. Okay, you can find a Benjamite in Ghana. You can find a Benjamin in uh, Benjamite on Aruba. You can find a Benjamite on Jamaica. You can find a Benjamite on Trinidad and Tobago. You can find a Benjamite on, on Barbados. And how do they call themselves? After the land. Became their own nationality. You see? Go on. Um, this is Ezekiel 31. Oh, that's done. Give me the judges. That was one, the first year. Okay. Um, Ezekiel 31, verse 9. Isaiah 9. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of Yahweh envied him. Yeah, he was being envied. Go on. This Judges 9, verse 7. And when they told it to Jotham, Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim and lift up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, you men of uh, Shechem, that Yahweh may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, rain, uh, rain thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor Yahweh and men, and go to promote, to be promoted of, over the trees? And See, so this, the trees was communicating with each other. Now the trees don't speak. Physical trees don't, don't speak, so it was, it was not talking about literal trees, it was talking about the people. They was discussing who was going to be set up king over the people, man. Okay? Being the sons of, uh, of uh, Gideon. Okay? So that, that's it, basically. Yeah. So let's go back um, to the topic that was at hand. Uh, give, give me the flourish. You want Psalms as well. Give me the flourish. This is the second Estras. Chapter 6 and verse 28. Let me uh, start at verse 27. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which hath been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Yeah, man. The truth which so long had been been without truth, with fruit, without fruit shall be declared. So the heavenly Father, like I said, has destructed uh, our nation, brought back the service of prophets who stand in their lot in the end of the days. Give me that in Daniel 12. They stand in their lot in the end of the days, coming back with the spirit of Yahweh. Okay, with this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and preach this word, man. 
Okay, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So they are back today, man. Doing what they had to do and doing what they did back in the days also. Okay, which is preach this word among the people. Bring back the heritage that was once given unto us and waking up the people out of the slumber. Yeah. It's Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord Jehovah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Yeah, man. So the Heavenly Father deals with the servants, the prophets, and he uses them to, to teach the people. He uses them to wake up the people. And in these, in these days, he has allowed this truth to flourish. Okay? Now, the word flourish is actually a word that uh, pertains to um, flowers. A flower flourishes. But we are called the Heavenly Father, His delicate plant. We are the Most High's delicate plant. Okay? Something He rejoices at. Something He has desire towards. You know, looking to look upon. Because a flower, why do people put flowers in their, in their house? Because it's nice to look at, man. It's nice to have in your, in your, in your living room. It's funny that you said that uh, we are compared to that flower, right? But that also means that something that, you know, leaves a seed, it means that it pertains to a certain type of plant, right? So that means that that truth, which that's what we're referring to, it cannot come from these other nations, man. So Esau cannot tell us things concerning the scriptures neither, man. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. And it's funny, man, because I, even my dog, man, my dog loves the smell of flowers. He is like such a softy, man. He be walking in the field. And he, he just wants to smell flowers. <laughs> he smells flowers. He be, and I see him thinking like, hmm, this smells good. Then he walks on. He sees another um, uh, branch of flowers. And he's like, hmm, I'm going to smell these flowers. Oh, it smells good. And then he just walks on, man. I see he likes the smell of flowers. Lavender and stuff like that. He be smelling that. Okay? But... You know, to come back to the point, this truth shall flourish, man. It shall grow and become, become big amongst the nations. And the world is going to know about this truth, you know. Like it says in Matthew chapter 13 that, you know, this truth started off as a, as a mustard seed. But eventually it's going to turn out to be a huge tree. That even the fowls of the air come and lodge in it. Check what it's all about. You see? In that way, this truth has become is becoming still huge man that these 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 devils james white the edomite vocab no class alone <laughs> these type of people are digging into it together with all these uh, all these churches man these churches is looking at it going to vocab alone what they are all about the hebrew israelites they it seems that they have some understanding okay because when whenever you encounter uh, 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 let me just keep it on G a great millstone whenever you encounter a great millstone group you will be confounded with the scriptures man because you don't know what it's talking about okay because the heavenly father <laughs> deals with his men to preach this word he doesn't deal with these churches man because they have no they lack understanding their their um their doctrine is as uh swiss cheese <laughs> holes. with swiss cheese has holes in it okay you're not supposed to be able to contradict your doctrine with another scripture. You see, there has not been one Christian alive that answered me. So what is John 17 talking about when Yahweh Shai says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. There has not been one Christian on this earth that tells me what that is about. You see? So yeah, man. I'm gonna go to the toilet. Uh, yeah, bring it out. It's Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31. Uh, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Yeah, the man that took this mustard seed is Yahushai. The field is the world, and the seed is the truth. Okay, and the seed is planted. Go on. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, 
so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. You see that? So this truth has grown to be so big that, um, that the people flock to it, man, and come to check out what it's all about. You see? They come and check out what it's all about, man. And that is the time that we are uh, uh, coming towards. A time wherein, you know, this truth is known across the whole earth, man. And like the scripture says, then shall the end come. Bring it out. This is Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. Yeah, a witness unto all nations, man. Because why? Give me Isaiah 11 and 11. A witness unto all nations. Give me Tobit 13 and 1. I think it's 13 and 3, but we start at 1. Okay, witness unto all nations and then? And then shall the end come. Because why, why does it have to be preached unto all nations? Because among all nations, you have our people. Habakkuk 1 and 5. Okay, give me that. This is Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pethros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. See that? So the dispersed of Judah, you know, the outcast of Israel, the people, and it says the outcast. So also the dispersion has, um, has come because some of the people were kicked out of Israel, man. Let that man be cut off from Israel. Okay, that man or woman or family that is cut off from Israel went to live his own life in the outskirts of Israel in other countries, became multiplied there also, Samaria, Greece, okay, uh, Asia Minor, you know, um, uh, Egypt, some, some of our people went back there, the outcasts of Israel, um, uh, among Moab, King David went to Moab, man, you know. Um, uh, among the Philistines, amongst Cush, you had the Ethiopian eunuch. He was amongst uh, the Ethiopians, Cushites, you see? So, those people had to be gathered also, and they are being gathered right now, man. Okay? They are being gathered right now. And this word is being preached amongst all the nations because they are amongst them. It said Egypt. You have our people among the Egyptians. You have our people among Elam. Okay? The, how you call them? The, the Dalit. Okay? That's our people amongst the people from India, man. Elam, which is called Elam. You have the Punjabi. You have a lot of tribes amongst so-called heathen nations that are actually descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? They need to be gathered also. Give me the Tobit. It's Tobit chapter 13 and verse 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be Yahweh that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. Go on. For, for he doeth scourge and hath mercy. He, he leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he had scattered us among them. See that? Confess Yahweh Shem Yahshai before the Gentiles because the children of Israel are scattered among them. Okay, give me Habakkuk 1 and 5. This is Habakkuk 1, verse 5. Behold ye among the heathen. Behold ye among the heathen. You see, so our people are among the heathen. James 1 and 1. Behold, ye among the heathen, man. Our people are scattered amongst these heathen because the Heavenly Father said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26, that he would scatter us and make the remembrance to cease from among men. So that's what he did. Okay, so now 
being in the, in the end of the days, being in the end times, those same people that were once scattered need to be brought back. And for that though, this word has to be preached across the whole world. Now the scripture says that, you know, we wouldn't be able to travel the whole world and to reach every corner where Israel is scattered. So what has the Heavenly Father done? He has set up the internet. And through the internet, we are able to, to reach these places, man. You see? We are able to do that. And Esau knows it, man. This age of, uh, of technology, this age of information is working against him, man. This internet, okay, these elites have realized, man, this internet is only working against us, man. Because their nakedness is being revealed and this truth that was hidden has been made known. This truth has been made known across the whole earth. And guess what? Then shall the end come. Uh, a couple of scriptures. Yeah, give it to uh, Prophet Sub. I'm gonna go to the toilet real quick. You ready? This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations with the Lord Yahweh thy power hath driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord Yahweh thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, with the Lord Yahweh thy power hath scattered thee. Yeah, you see, so it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that we have been scattered. And that point has to be um, proven, that point has to be made, that everything, uh, the, uh, let me say, the truth has to be scattered across the four corners of the earth. Because we are scattered across the four corners of the earth. Because of the Most High, um, His wrath that came upon us, you know? And how else can the um, scriptures come to, to fruition? How else can the scriptures be fulfilled unless we be scattered, unless we, we prophesy unto the wind, we prophesy, on, in, um, publish it on the internet, you know, with the unicorn, which represents the, the internet, you know? The yeah. scriptures even says, how shall they basically call upon the name of the Heavenly Father if they have not received the name? How do they receive the name? Through the spirit and power of Yah Bashem Shai by the servant of the prophets. Prophets, man, being set up by the Heavenly Father. Um, um, this Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 4. If any of thine be driven out to the utmost part of heaven, from thence will the Lord Yahweh thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Yeah, so it's the Most High already said it. It doesn't matter how far uh, you, you moved or you, you migrated. The Most High is going to find you there, and the, the sheep is going to hear his voice, the voice of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and of Yahweh Shai, and he's going to recognize, like, okay, no, this is time, it's go time for me right now, you know? This is what I've been waiting for, this is what I've been looking for, I've been lying dormant, you know? You're not enjoying this world, you're not enjoying uh, taking, um, you might have been enjoying the, the world, you might have been in your flesh, but as soon as you heard this uh, truth, you were sealed, you see? Yeah. And not only that, but if you go back to the first verse, it says that the Most High will bring both the, the blessings and the curse upon us, man. And there were times back in the days when we was blessed by the Heavenly Father under the reign of King David, for instance, and during the time of King Solomon for, you know, about 40 years. But it also talks about the curses, which we're still suffering up until this day. Afterwards, it speaks about us being driven among these four corners of the earth, but then the Most High is still bringing us back, showing you that no matter what, promise of the Heavenly Father that he made unto our forefathers will eventually still come to pass, man, even though we transgressed the law of the commandments. Um, you got a scripture? This Deuteronomy chapter, actually, yes. Oh, yeah. give, me, give me Isaiah 63, verse uh, 21. No? Yeah, possess it for a small season. Was it Isaiah 63? Uh, this Deuteronomy chapter 28, Chapter 28 and verse uh, 26. Salakia. Chapter 32 and verse 26. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them 
to cease from among men. Yeah, man. So that's what the Most High did. He promised that. He said that in the book of Deuteronomy. And now we're living in the time of uh, Revelation. You know, so these things came to pass. And how much more um, in the end of the time when we're living in right now, you know. Back then we were scattered, but now we're scattered even more into all four corners of the earth, you know. Like the world was going into, you have the, our people in Egypt, in the, amongst the Canaanites, you know. But now we, through um, ships and through um, uh, airplanes, we have been traveling all over the earth, man. you know. So our people are scattered all over the earth. This Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 9. No, it's like it. This Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9. For the Lord Yahweh portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Yeah, man. So we all scattered around, around the four corners of the earth. But still, the Most High deals with Jacob, man. You know, you might be looking different. You, must, you know, you might be looking like a heathen. You might be looking like an Ishmaelite, an Elamite, whatever the case may be. But your father still goes through the lineage of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's still a Jacob, man. You know, we scattered amongst the four, four corners of the earth. You know, we have Jake in uh, in Greece, Germany, Netherlands. Here, where we are, uh, uh, North, uh, what is it called? Sweden. You know, everywhere, man. Philip, Philippines. Yeah. You know, fit, 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 fit now. Yeah, Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. Vietnam. You know, Jake is everywhere, and still, even after all this happened, this slavery and so and and, and stuff like that, still the the Paul's high deals with with Jake, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You even have people in the Philistines uh, preaching uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Philippines, Philippines. That's what it's going to be. Philistines. Um, <laughs> Philippines. So like, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, this is Daniel 12 and verse 10. Many shall be purified and made wide and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Yeah, man. So this truth is going to be prophesied, but the wicked are still going to do wickedly. The wicked are not going to understand this truth because they have not um, gotten the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They don't have that seal. They don't have that capability to understand this. We have that, that zeal. We have that um, thing that has to be unlocked within us, you know? So when, once it's unlocked, then you're going to go full force, you know? Can I add on to it? And uh, the wise are the ones that the most high ordains to understand this truth. And that means that they don't only have to look like, you know, your, your typical, you know, so-called Negro, Latino, Native American. But they can also look like the Indian nations as, you know, we're going into in, 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 in these teachings, man. Let's see. It's Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 and verse 24. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. Yeah, man. So to the holy, his ways are plain. If you walk in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, it's going to be plain to you. These things you are going to automatically want to walk in his ways. You know, you're going to see the benefits. Even if you don't see the benefits, you know that the Most High, he has his, um, he only wants good for you. You know, he only wants you to, to profit, not profit, but uh, how do you say it? Flourish. He's not going to put these laws upon you that are grievous. If you understand that, you're going to want to walk in the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. The things like the, the water, for instance, that they put fluoride in the water, you know, you are going to um, hear these things if you're with the men of the Lord. You're going to seek these things and you're going to be like, nah, man, this this devil, he's going um, deep to, his, his, his anger is, and hatred towards us is deep, you know, that he wants to calcify your pineal gland so that you're not in sync with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Yeah, because uh, when it says, it's, it's, uh, when it says, plain unto the, to the, to the, plain unto the holy, the stumbling block unto the wicked. Yeah, so if you come into this truth, you know, you understand this truth, you know, the breakdowns are very, fairly easy for you to understand as well. Of course, there might be some time that goes over that for you to understand how the, the Sabbath is determined by the moon, or, you know, how uh, a lineage is determined by the Father, 
uh, how we are incarnations in the scriptures, but these things are fairly easy for you to understand in, in, a, in, a, in a certain place, you know, that shows you like, hey man, this, this man has been given the spirit by the Heavenly Father to understand it, man. Yeah. Give me the Isaiah, Isaiah 19. God, this is it's Isaiah chapter 19 at first 19 yeah, don't go back to it. Uh, let him read first the Isaiah again yeah. this is Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pethro and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Yeah man, so the Most High is going to do it the second time. The first time he did it by um, in the time of Egypt, you know. He saved all the nation of Israel, but for the second time, he's going to only save the, the, the elect and the remnant, you know, the innumerable multitude. So the Most High is going to stretch out his hand for the second time. So just like how you had the, the, the Passover in the time of Egypt, there's going to be a Passover also this, this second time that Yahweh is going to come here and he's going to basically put us out of the way, you know, so that he can bring that destruction. He's going to pass over us, you know. Because the wrath of Yahweh Shai is, is, is going to be yeah, enormous, man. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want any parts of that smoke. You see, so he's going to come and the Most High is going to separate the, the elect so that Yahweh Shai can do his damage. And, uh, let's go to Isaiah 63 afterwards. Give me the Isaiah 19, because it also said from the land of Egypt, right? Yeah. Um, it's Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 19. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, so it's basically double fold this. You have uh, Egypt, which represents America right now, you know, Babylon the Great. And it also, uh, that's spiritually Egypt, but it also speaks about um, the land of Egypt. You know, our people are also in that land. You know, so where we are, that's where the sanctuary of the Most High is. Where we are, where we, where we are prophesying the downfall, and when we are prophesying these, uh, these, these visions and scriptures about from the prophets and this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High, that's where the Most High is dwelling. You know, that's where His His Spirit is. That's where the altar is. That's where we are putting up spiritual sacrifices. You see, the Most High He doesn't delight in in the the the. the uh, Sacrifice of uh, Hebrews? Yeah, Hebrews. The blood of goats and, and um, calves. That was Hebrews 9. Yeah. We also spoke about that one. Yeah, it. Verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord Jehovah of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord Jehovah because, the, because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall, shall deliver them. Yeah, so that savior is Yahweh Shai. And by us being and standing upon our feet, you know, prophesying uh, against this kingdom, that's going to be a sign for the Most High, like, okay, now they're ready. I'm going to send the savior, you know, and, and uh, he's going to deliver them. He's going to get us out of the way so that he can uh, bring his fury upon the, the ones that pierced him and all these other nations, you know, like it says in the scriptures. Verse 21. Verse 21. And the Lord Jehovah shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord Jehovah in that day, and shall do sacrifice and obligate, ob ob oblation. oblation, yeah, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord Jehovah and perform it. 
Yeah, man. So the Isaiah uh, 11 is speaking about the Egyptians, the real Egyptians, but this is speaking about the spiritual Egyptians. And who are the spiritual Egyptians? Just like in the time of uh, the Ephesians, you know, the Corinthians, those are all uh, Gentile-minded, Gentile-like uh, Israelites. And the Egyptians in this uh, verse is speaking about the um, Israelites that were in that state of mind of, of Egypt, you know, in that uh, Babylonian Jews, in, in the ways of America. You see? Egypt way better? Why make his dollars to suffer in the wilderness? That, that type of mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Verse uh, 22. And the Lord Yahweh shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even unto the Lord. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. Yeah, man. So now we are being healed. You know, our, our mental uh, wound, you know, that, that mental wound that we had of not knowing who we are that we are the biblical Israelites, that we are the, the, the sons of the Most High, you know, that we had received the blessing through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Most High, he's healing us, you know, the, the, the spiritual healing is, is happening right now. Our people are mentally sick, you see? Go ahead. Verse 23, in that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt and the Egyptians into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. Yeah, man, so it speaks about the highway, the highway from uh, Egypt to Assyria, which that highway represents this, this deliverance, man. You know, what I was speaking about, that these chariots are going to come and the Most High is going to deliver us for the second time. Those are the chariots, that highway is that, that way to deliverance. And the, even the Egyptians and Assyrians, those are spiritual, Egyptians, spiritual Assyrians. Those are Israelites, you know, that don't know that they're Israelites. Go ahead. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord Jehovah of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. You see? So the Most High is talking about Egypt and Assyria and Israel. How are they going to be combined if they're not Israelites? You know? They have to be, it's speaking about Israel. Yeah, they have to be related according to numbers. You know? So the Most High is speaking about Egyptians and Assyrians, but still they are Israelites. Just like, like how you have the book of Ephesians and Corinthians. Those are Israelites that don't know um, that they are of the seed of Israel, you know, they are Gentile state of mind, Israelites. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 63. You want it uh, to start with verse 1, no? You spoke about your year about the Alpha Shai coming back and you don't want to add that back. Yeah, yeah. This is Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling with the greatness of strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Yeah, man, so it speaks about who is this that's coming from, uh, from Edom. And today we went into that Edom is Esau, which is the so-called uh, white people, you know? So the most, the most High is going to send the son, and the son is going to bring down Edom. He's going to bring bring down Basra, you know, and the capital of Edom now is in uh, Babylon the Great, which is America. You know, that's where Yahusha is going to come, and he's going to do a, a, a slaughter where his garment is going to be filled and rolled in blood. You know, uh, both symbolically and uh, physically. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's double fold, symbolically and physically, because he's going to do. A, <laughs> A big slaughter, man, like it says in um, Isaiah 34. It's Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5. Right? Let me see real quick. Mm, yeah. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Yeah, man. So the sword 
represents the missiles, the Most High is go also going to let World War III pop off. So the missiles are going to drop in America, and Yahweh Shai is going to be in the midst of that fire, also doing damage. You know, so the Most High is going to send his sword, sword into heaven. It's going to be bathed in heaven. And what does heaven represent? Represents, heaven represents a state of rulership. You know, and Esau is going to be in a state of rulership. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, and Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. You see? So that's where the Most High is going to do a, send his son to and perform a great slaughter. And those are the people of his curse. You know? Yahweh uh, has uh, cursed them with the curse of leprosy, the curse of Cain. <coughs> you know? First. Verse uh, 6, the sword of the Lord Jehovah is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord Jehovah had a sacrifice in Bosra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. You see, like we were reading in Isaiah 63, speaking about Bosra, here it's also speaking about Basra, it's speaking about Edom, it's speaking about the, the, the capital, the headquarters of Edom. The modern day, um, what do you want to say? Yeah, so uh, back, in the, back in the days, the, 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 the capital of uh, the land of Edom was Basra, right. like the brother said. But the modern day capital of Edom in this day and age, which is scripted for just Basra, yeah. is America. Yeah, man. And also, if you go into that word Basra, it goes into uh, sheepfold. And that's where our people have been uh, held captive also. That's the, the main prison, you know? The main prison of our people, which our people are called the, the lost sheep of Israel, you know? In the scriptures, Yahweh Shai called our people the lost sheep of Israel. Rather go to the lost sheep of Israel to, to show them that they are Israelites. You see? Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just full circle, man. <laughs> Isaiah 11 and 11, the Egyptians, we are scattered all over the place. We, we are those lost sheep. But these, these uh, Idumians, these Edomites, they took us and put us in, in uh, prison in America. You know, and that's where our people are the most oppressed. You know, that's where they are destroyed. Are you the Holy Spirit? What? Are you the Holy Spirit coming to Nazareth or Jericho or Jesus? <laughs> are you the Holy Spirit king? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, if, if, if you... I'm an alien. Um, you don't know what, what, he, what I should do with him. Yeah. Are you a holding screen? No, no, no. The holy, the holy stream that is going to Israel, something like that. Or so, Jericho or whatever. You know, sometimes... Jericho, though. He stood before Jericho. Yeah. yeah. He blasted it down with the trumpet. Yeah, he said, we the built place. Jericho. He said, we rebuild it, you know? Yeah, man, sometimes... Hmm? This thing is really warm. What is it? The coffee that you always drink. From uh, the Albert Heim. Yeah. yeah. I thought you, you went to Starbucks. No. <laughs> if I drink a Lepkov coffee and then a Starbucks... Man. <laughs> I'm not gonna stand here long. Michael Jackson moves. Okay. Yeah, man, so, uh, like the brother just read, and I say at 34, you know, there's going to be a great sacrifice in America, in Babylon, the great capital of, of uh, Edom, you know? Because the blood of rams and goats, that, that represents a uh, sacrifice. You see? Also, you had that scripture, right? Uh, with the Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 9. And let me, um, verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkled the unclean, uh, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified through the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai through the eternal spirit? offered up himself without spot to the Most High, where is your conscience from that works to serve the living power? Yeah, man, so in the book of uh, Leviticus, it speaks about that we have to shed the blood of uh, goats and of rams to 
to, to purify ourselves, you know, to, to do away with our, our sins. So those, that, that was the, the laws that the Most High gave us to, to, you know, survive until this time, where Yahweh Shai was going to be the one that is going to shed his blood and purify you. Not by the, the blood of lambs and uh, goats and, and uh, calves, you know, because that, that was a, a timely thing, that was for, for a small uh, moment. But when Yahweh Shai came, he's that perfect sacrifice that he covers your, your sins in the past and also the sins in the future that you're going to commit. You know, that's a that's a great sacrifice that he did. Putting nailing himself onto the cross. You see? For us. Yeah, because um, you know the the offering up according to the Levitical priesthood, that was just an example of the heavenly things, man. Yeah. Yeah, just like how it says in uh, Hebrews 3, you know, the, the uh, Hebrews 13. How shy he is that high priest, you know. And when Moses saw a glimpse of the house of the Most High, he tried to make a replica here upon earth to the best of his abilities. He tried to put the, the, the laws and the things that he saw uh, in the best way possible on writing, you know, so that he can replicate it, like how it's being done in the heavens. This is Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine fat? Yeah, man, so that red, that red represents the blood, how much blood is going to be shed, you know? Yahushai, when he's going to come, it's going to be compared like uh, trotting in the, the wine fat. I think the book of Revelation, Revelation also speaks about that. Um, Revelation 19. 19 and 11. Yeah. This is uh, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Yeah, what was that? That's Matthew 11. chapter 16 and verse 27. It's Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27. For the, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Yeah, man, beautiful, man. Just like we read in the first verse, that he's going to come in the glory of his strength, and what does, what does that glory <laughs> represent? That glory, the glory of the Most High, are these chariots. He's going to come with that great fathership, and he's going to come with uh, the chariots and with the angels, and he's going to bring a sore slaughter, which is that sacrifice upon uh, the, the Idumians, upon the so-called white people. You know, just like how Apostle Tahar, he said there's going to be a great cookout. America is going to be that great cookout, man. Huh? This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and gl great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to other. Yeah, man, beautiful, man. Five precepts. Okay, uh, start from the beginning again. It's Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great gl glory. Yeah, man. So that's the, the glorious apparel where he's going to come with. He's going to come in the glory of um, the, the chariots of the Most High and all the people, all the nations are going to... <laughs> but vision that I get in my mind is that uh, uh, that cartoon where you see a so-called uh, dark-skinned man is coming and you have Edomites like, hey, he's coming, he's back and he's black. You know, that that's that vision that I get. You, you know that uh, cartoon? 
It's not really a cartoon, it's a, a strip figure on a plaatje. So, yeah. so that's what they're gonna be like. They're gonna be like, oh, Yahusha is back and he's black. So called black. Man. You know? They're going to be fearful. They're not going to have that Cesare Bushir in their mind when they're going to see um, Yahusha come. Man. Everybody thinks that he's going to come, that, Yahu, that uh, Jesus is going to come and that everything's going to be flowers and peaceful and uh, rainbows and, and unicorns and stuff. No, man. Ponies. <laughs> a dark-skinned man with an afro in yeah. the sky, yeah, just yeah. standing with dark -skin there. With dark-skinned angels. <laughs> Angry as hell. With powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready to revenge that. With a him. shout. Yeah, yeah. People are going to shit themselves, man. They're, they're going to um, be With like, Leviathan. Yeah. yeah. People, their souls are going to leave their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, because that's the last movement of the body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, saw this, uh, I saw this clip of the Leviathan whale, which was a whale with, uh, with teeth, sharp teeth, that used to live, and they called it Leviathan. Mm. As if that would be Leviathan. Man, Leviathan uses that whale as a toothpick, man. That's nothing, man. Shit. That's not the Leviathan that is described in the scriptures, man. The Leviathan that's described in the scriptures is a huge sea, sea creature. A huge sea creature, man. Where the water boils. Close. Presence. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Close to um, Godzilla. Okay? Because the light comes out of his nostrils and the fire out of his mouth. Sparks out of his mouth. Yeah. So all those things are going to come for, for the Edomites, you know, because he's in rulership, just like how the Pharaoh was in rulership and the Most High destroyed him. That's how he's going to destroy the so-called white man, you know, because people nowadays they're like, yeah, uh, my cousin, he says, like, okay, heaven and earth have to be moved for this white man to be taken out of rulership, man. Because he doesn't know the scriptures, but that's what he says. He's like, no, nah, man, this, this man is so powerful. He's like it's never gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Then you tell him also, like, listen, man, back in the days you had Ethiopians in rulership. Look at them now. Do you believe that? That's in history. Go ahead and look it up. The Ethiopians used to rule the whole world. Do you know those people that live in Thailand on these boats? And that, that 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 go fishing on these or on these uh, wooden boats, you know these people? They used to rule the whole world. Did you if you look at them now, do you think that would be the case? You don't think so because of the state where, where they are in right now. So that's why the scriptures in this uh, um, in the that's why the scripture also says, is this the man that make make it the whole world to tremble? Because the state wherein he is gonna be after the destruction is like <laughs> he's weak as hell man like him he used to make the whole world afraid you understand so only when when someone is taken out of place then you gonna realize like oh he wasn't that 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 crazy powerful at all man because look what took him down you see but Esau gives you the impression that he is the most high, man. He gives you the impression that, uh, impression that he is super powerful, man. Because of his, his, um, his lies and technology. NASA literally means deceit. In the Hebrew, you understand? A lot of stuff that they be bringing out is all garbage, it's all trash. All underwater. Uh, um. Yeah. Um, scenes, you know, that they, you see, you see, um, belliches yeah. with, with lucht. Bubble, bubble, bubbles, bubbles, yeah, bubbles. bubbles. So the, the, that whole thing is, is hoax, a hoax. You see the footprint of, well, what's that man, the, the man on the moon. You see one print on the photo, but when they sell his boot, it's a whole different print. They lost the technology to go to Yeah, he also said, there's this, uh, not Neil Armstrong, but the other dude. He, they say he was going crazy, but he was telling everyone like, this shit never happened. Not Neil Armstrong, but the other one. I think the second. He said that shit never happened, man. 
And that shows you also why why ain't they going back and forth to the moon now? Yeah. On a daily basis. Because yeah, 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 yeah. technology has expanded so much. They yeah. should be able to go to the moon on a daily basis yeah, now, man. Yeah, yeah. No, no. The technology, we lost it. We don't know how to, to go to the moon anymore. But they want to go to Mars. But you're talking about you go and live on Mars. Yeah, the first yeah. people will be sent to Mars in 2024. That's what they said. The first people are going to be sent to Mars to live there in 2024. That was what they said in like 2000, 2016 or something. I wonder if those calculations are still adding up. Astronauts. Astronauts. <laughs> These nuts. It's Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord Yahweh is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Oh yeah. yeah all the point that I wanted to bring out this um, the, the lies like the brother was uh, going into that's why we call him the devil because if you go into that word devil it means uh, diab which is diablos which means a calumniator or a liar a false accuser and that's what he that's what he does you know the, the book of Revelation speaks on how he's going to deceive the nations and it was given unto him to deceive the nations he has the sword which is uh, the modern day sword or the guns and the, the uh, technology and the um, Missiles, weapons, you know, that's what he has, but he also has that, that, that subtle uh, tongue, you know, to deceive these uh, nations. And the Most High made him like that, you know, for this one purpose, so that the Most High can show his wrath. Read the Kimbo Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord Yahweh is a man of war, Yahweh is his name. Yeah, man, so the Most High, he is a man of war. It's not a woman, not a woman of war. He's a man of war, you know, for the people that say, uh, yeah, the most high God is his uh, feminine or he can, he, he can be a she also. No, man, the Bible, the scriptures say that he's a man and he's a man of war. You know, he likes a good fight. That's why he's lifting up this uh, Edomite, this so-called white uh, person right now, so that he can have a good fight, you know? And he enjoys a good fight. Yeah. This is Romans chapter 9 verse 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Yeah man, so just like how everybody knows that um, the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt and that they went through the Red Sea and that they were delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians, you know. That was the, the, the first exodus. That's how the, the second ex exodus is going to be. The first exodus is going to be like, ah, that's, that's uh, small stuff, you know, compared to the, the next exodus, which is going to the, be the next exit of the children of Israel out of the land of their captivity, which is, the capital is uh, Babylon the Great, which is America. Can I answer Because <laughs> um, it also, it, it, it says for even for the same purpose have I raised thee up so the Heavenly Father of course that many purposes why he uh, uh, basically made the uh, Egyptian Empire great you know if you go into history it also you know, references Joseph and how basically he was saved but one of the things that the most I did through building up Egypt <clears throat> was to show the power man that the Heavenly Father possessed in comparison to, to, to Pharaoh because in those times you know the Egyptian Empire being so great and, and, and vast these other nations, you know, esteemed it as very powerful, like, hey, we cannot, you know, fight against them. But the Heavenly Father proved otherwise, man, through His power. Same thing with Esau in this day and age. The Heavenly Father has raised up Esau to a certain level, you know, and, and in the eyes of the people, he seems like a, you know, a, a God upon earth, you know, between, uh, between brackets, quote-unquote. But actually, he's nothing, man. And the Most High is going to show His power yet again by bringing Esau down in a very... You know, glorious, glorious way, man. You wanted Jeremiah 23? Yeah, just like, uh, just like how um, my cousin was saying, like, yeah, heaven and earth has to be moved for this man to be taken out of power. So that's how people look at the so-called white man. You know, like, hey, no, this, this is... But heaven and earth will be moved. Yeah, exactly. Heaven and earth will be moved. Everything's going to shake out of hey, place. The destruction is going to come by a way that the world deems to be fantasy. Yeah. That's how powerful it's going to be. The world looks at it as fantasy, 
that's how this this rulership will be taken out by something that they call science fiction. An alien invasion. <laughs> Strange. You unknown. think it's funny now until it happens. An invasion but unknown. Yeah. Alien means foreigner. Something that you don't know. You want the Jeremiah 23 hand? Uh, Stranger. Store, store that one. What, what do you have? This is Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, man, so they're speaking about the false prophets, you know, that they, they don't tell them the, the truth, they don't tell the Israelites the truth, you know. They steal the word from his neighbor, you know, you don't tell them the 100% the, the truth. Yeah. So woe unto them, destruction unto them. Therefore, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, the power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, so these pastors are also going to get their, their uh, judgment for doing that. You know? The Israelites that know that they're Israel, Israel, but they're not giving the 100%. The Most High is going to have a, a certain a specific judgment for you also. Go ahead. Verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Yeah, man. So the remnant which is scattered across the four corners of the earth, like we were going into, the Most High is going to gather them. You know, he's going to gather them how? Through the, the chariots. And he's going to plant them in Israel. You know, that's where they're going to be fruitful, you know, in the kingdom. Go ahead. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, said the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, man, so our people are going to be prosperous. Our people, um, like the scripture says, all of Israel is going to be uh, righteous. We're going to be all righteous. So we are not going to have to uh, worry about a uh, thing. I don't understand. But also the right people to instruct our people into righteousness shall be set up by the Heavenly Father, man. Yeah. Starting off, you know, with, with the other apostle, GMS on down. Yeah, starting off, you have Yahweh, then you have Yahweh Shai, then you have the 12, you know, and then you have um, the 144,000 according to rank. You see, those are going to lead our people. Our people in righteousness rule. Yeah, rule our people. Because our people don't have to be led no more. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Our people, what does the leader do? He leads you into the right direction. But in the kingdom, we're gonna be already in the right direction. We are. We're gonna be in the right place. Better yet said. So we, our people, don't have to be lead, led no more. Our people have to be ruled. Yeah. Right now is the leading, and then is the ruling. And even the babies, a baby is going to be born with the law, statutes, and commandments in him. So he's going to automatically know what to do, know what is right and wrong. Yep. Verse 5. Behold, the days come, said the Lord Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Yeah, man, so that's Yahweh Shai, like we were going into. You have Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai is that branch that has been brought up from uh, King David's loins. And, and, and he's going to uh, execute judgment and justice here upon earth. So before he does that, before he sits on the, the seat of the throne, he's going to demolish this place. He's going to um, let um, put this place uh, desolate, make it desolate. His garments are going to be rolled in blood. And then he's going to put many crowns upon his head, like it's going to say in Revelation, you get that after this. And he's going to rule in righteousness. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. You see, so that time is not now yet, because uh, they say the Israel, Israel, the kingdom of heaven is, is now basically, because the Israelites, the, so the people of the Most High are in their land. No, man, they're not dwelling safely right now. You know, the scripture says, when um, Israel shall be in their land, the Israelites shall be in their land, there's not going to be any war anymore. So what do we see and hear about right now? Wars and rumors of wars, you know? 
And even in that place, Israel, um, the people that inhabit the land, they have the biggest um, sodomite uh, parade here on earth. You know? So that, that time is not now, man. We're not living in the kingdom of heaven yet. That, that time has to still come. And that's when Judah and Israel, which Judah represents the, which is the, the head of the southern kingdom, and Israel represents the, the head of the northern kingdom, which is Ephraim, they shall dwell safely. We're not, we're going to be okay. We're going to be good, man. We're not going to live in fear of our oppressor. Okay. This is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Go and tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Yeah, man, so the vision is speaking about the, the, the prophecies. You know, the prophecies are set for an appointed time. And the main prophecy that has to be fulfilled is the one from uh, Revelation. You know, that Yahweh is going to come and that he's going to subdue all his enemies. You know, the ones that pierce them, the ones that, that um, hey. hate him. You know, the ones that hate the laws of uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the ones that put everything upside down. They want the Israelites to be on the bottom and they want to only profit, uh, profit from our people. You know, speaking about these uh, Elamites, Elamites, they, they don't like us, but they like making money off of us. You know, these Chinese people, they hate us, but they like making money off of us. Only when you come and buy, they talk to you. Yeah. When you buy something, that's that's the only time you catch a, a mobile talk to you. Yeah. Try to go to a mobile party. You're not invited. You don't even want to be there. No, but yeah, like, I was already thinking, like, <laughs> why the fuck would you want to be at a mobile party anyway? You don't know if it's a man or a woman. Yeah. With these mobites and Thai Thailand yeah. people, you don't fucking know who, who, what you're dealing with, man. How much? Yes. I wouldn't want to be in that place, man. That's why I'm looking sideways at at a, at the Jake that likes Chinese females, man. I'm looking sideways, man. I'm like, hey, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm Bunch of lady boys and shit. You, yeah, see, you yeah. seen it on Instagram? Lady boys, aka fucking T to the R to the A to the N N Y, man. You, you know what I'm saying? Cause but you seen that on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. This guy asking boys? like, selling guys. How do you hide it? <laughs> You're a pretty girl. How do you hide it or something? Like I'm lady that? boy. What? I'm lady boy. See, yeah. look. Then he'd be like, oh, shit. terrible, man. Especially Esau. Esau is in that, man. That's why the, the ones from Holland here, they go there. I yeah. saw this video today, man. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it in the, in the camera. Oh. It's where this world is leading towards, man. And if you see that shit, you laugh about it. But it's actually real, man. Where this world is leading towards, it's terrible, man. With all these things like, yeah, um, I want to be called this and that way i don't want to be called a gender and shit like that and eventually it's gonna let lead into a, into the household man wherein parents have to watch how they raise their children because they're gonna make them feel uncomfortable because the the new generation is growing up with this bullshit and the older generation is looking at this shit that's being pushed right now like what the fuck we don't we are not down with it but they are they are um they are um, indoctrinating the new generation and they're gonna raise up and be like, oh, it's normal, right? To be non-binary or to be called uh, they, them, you know? Why would you say so, them? Actually? So then later on, those children that are being raised with this corrupt mind, okay? They are gonna tell their parents how they should behave and how they should think man yeah, fuck yeah, out of yeah. here with your nonsense man you can call me that no hey, uh, you know what i, was I don't know what the fuck is on on the inside of my jacket but maybe it's sunglasses man you know what i was thinking they call themselves they and them. i'm smashing them it's old ones yeah it's the old ones though supposedly the ones right okay check this out Specific parent, uh, hey non binary offspring, hey non gender specific parent, uh, just wanted to let you know that dinner is ready uh, if you consent to it, of course. Um, I don't. <laughs>
I, I don't consent. Well, I was thinking maybe in an hour or so, if you're up to it, me and your other non-gender specific parent can sit in the living room and breathe for a little bit. <laughs> if, if it doesn't trigger you, of course. You know, I'm not sure if I'm triggered by that or offended. I, quite honestly, I, I don't know what to feel anymore. <laughs> Trust me, I don't know either, honey. Oh my God, did you just call me honey? Oh my God, I am so sorry. That's harassment. Please don't tweet about this. I already did. <laughs> well, it looks like my career is over. Well, maybe think 20 times before you talk. We'll have to live on the streets. Well, that doesn't matter to me because my feelings are more important than all of our physical well-beings. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go into the living room and cry. Uh, I love you. You don't have to say it back. I'm not going. Real talk. Uh, this is exactly where y'all are heading. No joke. You see, so Jake is commenting like, this is where y'all going with this bullshit, man. You think it's funny and you think, you know, com comedy shit. But this is where the world is heading, man, with this nonsense, man. They making up stuff, man. That's why um, you had, the, what, what is his name? Pierce Morgan. He said, like, I identify as a, a black lesbian. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the woman said, no, but it has to be something that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was hearing the birds chirping when, I, when she made that comment, like, like a moment of silence. Let's think about this. <laughs> she says, yeah, but it has to make sense. He says, I identify as a black <laughs> a lesbian woman. And she says, no, but it does have to make sense. Well, okay. When you are born a male and you call yourself a female, does that make any sense? Does that make any sense when you call yourselves them? Multiple. Right. Right. Meanwhile, you are one. You have it makes you no sense, winner. man. Both Shut the, the fuck up, man. It makes no sense. The shit that they are pushing doesn't make no sense neither man so this man says i want to identify as a black uh, uh lesbian. lesbian woman and they said no 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 but it does have to make sense what you are saying otherwise we cannot accept it and i also saw this thing like um i forgot what it was man but the dude s said something in response oh no he said like um he was debating with a woman and uh, the woman said something like, um, I identify as did it that and the third. And then they was debating about that. And he said, you know what? Identif I identify as the person that is right in this conversation. <laughs> and she was like, she was thinking like, wait, that, okay, you identify as the person that's right in this conversation. I can say nothing back. That's, that's idiotic, man. That's idiotic, you see? But that's where this world is heading towards, man. That's why this place has been influenced by, a, uh, by a, um, the whole world is influenced by a place which is called Babylon, which Babylon in the, in the Hebrew is Babal, which means confusion. This place is completely confused, man. And actually the people that abide in the scriptures with other, other people also that, that still hold on to some form of intelligence, Look at them like, man, y'all, y'all completely lost, man. But I'm telling you, man, my, um, my, uh, my niece, my niece or my cousin, that's all is this shit, right? Here in Holland, we don't say cousin or niece. It's, everything is just niece, niece or niece, nephew. Niece is uh, the small one and the cousin is the one that's on your level from her yeah, sister. Yeah, actually it's a cousin, but she was born very late, so she's pretty young. So um, she's also about this them and they, and she's on this pride shit. I don't even talk to her, man. <laughs> I'm not talking to her, man. I'm like, man, I don't even see you, man. You know, she's she when I when I come to my grandmother with with my kids, she say hi to my kids. Even my sons be looking at her like, hey, you 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 strange, man. You know, they be like, well, on your mother's side, right? Yeah, from my mother's side. So Esau? Yeah, Esau, 100%. <laughs> my children even looking at her sideways like, man, don't even touch me, man. I don't know what the fuck you doing. Man. I don't want to breathe the air that you breathe. I don't want to breathe the air that you breathe, man. You know? So this shit is, 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 is invading all kinds of places. And when she talks, you, the madness, she pushes the madness upon adult people that know more of this world than her. She just came and now she thinks she knows the whole wide world mm. and everything is in her brain and she knows how the world should be run. Right. Meanwhile, your young punk ass mind is just being indoctrinated as right. we speak. Right. And while the, the 
uh, adult generation is still here that know a world that used how the world used to be this 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 is being kind of blocked but if that generation is gone and yeah. and yes. the generation her generation of my niece grows up and becomes parents then it's oh. done eh? hey i'm telling you then it's done we then it's finished my man it's finished and i read the video that i just showed i read on the comment boards don't even bring that shit to the caribbean islands man let me tell you <laughs> something man in the 90s Man, I'm telling you, man, the LGBT, that nonsense, man, people would stone the shit out of you, man. Like, in the Caribbean islands, there was a period in time where there were no guns. Yeah, people was holding knives in the Caribbean islands. But that was because we saw our parents having knives because they went fishing. On the Caribbean islands, fishing is the way to survive. You fish, you sell the fish, you make money. You come home. You know, you have something to eat. So the pa our forefathers would always have nice knives. The ch children, the youth would see it, start carrying knives also, but for different purposes. Anyway, before the knife talk and the gun talk, people would just grab stones, throw stones on, on a Batiman, man. Real quick, real quick, man. And he didn't even come out of the closet, nothing. Yeah. He would just get blasted with stones, man for being a little bit eh, eh, like that you wouldn't roll like that man you would watch yourself but now what does the scripture say they profess their uh, sin as sodom, sin as sodom openly show the countenance there's witness against them. yeah man they are they are not afraid man because why this whole government this whole rulership is moving along with them and that's why how Bashim Yashai ain't gonna make it come that far, far that their parents and shit is gonna be the ones left here to you know nah man that shit is gonna stop now bring out the last scripture this is i say oh he is it. sure that he is gonna okay. oh, oh no i gave it to him no like like you were saying uh, don't bring it into the caribbeans back then or even <laughs> now yeah. uh, in uganda two days ago the, they passed the yeah, law yeah, yeah. with the oh, yeah, it's yeah, a crime yeah, 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 in yeah, uganda right. to be of that community mm. yes. So, and that's that's where our people uh, reside. That's where our people are. You know, Uganda, uh, west part of Africa. So they even made it a law that you can't be part of that society there. Yeah, it's and then life. Esau has a problem with them, with the whole country, mm -hmm. because they want to set up their own rules and laws. And that shows you where it's going, man. Yeah. It's going towards the the thing that uh, Antiochus Epiphanes wanted to uh, push, man. That there is one law and one uh, uh, one. Um, what did he say? He wanted to push one law and one um, what else? First, uh, one language, one law, and one belief. You know, basically new world order, man. So another country is not allowed to have its own rules established because they are pushing this one rule, one world government that is led by them. Ah, oh, man, that's not a world I want to live in, man. It says uh, First Maccabees. Chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Yeah, man. See? So that's the same thing that they want to do right now, man. They call it the Great Reset. Reset everything and establish new ways new laws that are actually not new but they are always has, have always been in the philosophy of esau's mind man that's why these georgia guidestones when you look up the georgia guidestones it says if the if the uh, human race would ever come close to extinction and the ones that were left would have to abide by these rules which georgia guidestones the georgia guidestones the ones that are uh, yeah destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah destroyed yeah yeah when oh yeah i read I read about it yeah i kind of uh, forgot about it no, that's why i said it I'm but, like, they, they, but they, but they, they make say sure. they say it's for those rules are set down for if the uh, human race would ever come to close to extinction the ones that are left should abide by these rules and that makes you think like oh so it's not that bad they're just talking about you know this and that scenario but if that 
And then you can say like, okay, but this is in their mind though. They say that this would be the ideal way of living. So if they, in their mind, this would be the ideal way of living and they have the power to, um, to, um, Bypass. No, 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 to um, influence that in this modern day society, they fucking will, man. Yeah. They will. So bringing down human population to 500 million, if they have that, that possibility, they will do it. Now, what did uh, uh, um, these past Bill, years. Bill Gates say? He said the, the, the jabs is for depopulation, man. <laughs> My father was was battling me on on the on the vaccination things and stuff like that, and I said and I showed him the video. He was quiet, man. He was like, "Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what, <laughs> what did, did my to... son just show me?" <laughs> okay, that's fucked up. And then he he, he kind of changed his mind concerning it for a moment. I'm just keep it at that. Anyway, you know it is what it is. Can I bring that up? Wrap 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 it up. Wrap it up. Um, no, we'll wrap it up with the, with the last scripture. Uh, read the Jeremiah until 8. Six, six, six. This is Jeremiah chapter 20, 23, verse 6. In his days shall Judah be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord of Righteousness. Yeah, yeah. man, and the Lord of Righteousness, they're speaking about Jehovah Shai. You know, he's going to come, and okay, that's the scripture. He's going to come, he's going to lay everything desolate, put everything in, in its right or, rightful order and rightful place, and he's going to rule it in righteousness. That's why he's called the Lord our righteousness. So with that, I hope this video is edifying, and I want to say all praises, honor, and glory go on to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, Basham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mills for teaching us his truth, and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akiyam that is spread around the four corners of the earth. Spreading this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. 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 Shalom